presque trop largement. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, thank you. One minute start, okay. 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 Yeah, okay, super, super, yeah, great. Can you just check? Starting in one minute with uh, it's starting in one minute with pictures from Barcelona. Phil, you can come and take pictures of Barcelona. Good evening and welcome to a beautiful night here in Barcelona. We're here at the Real Club de Polo 
for a superb four days of jumping competition. The principal event this weekend, the FEI jumping, the Longin FEI jumping Nations Cup final. However, tonight it's about the Grand Prix, one of the oldest, most established five-star Grand Prix classes in the world. First jumped for in 1902. Well, we've got 43 competitors representing 17 nations for the Grand Prix. And I'm Phil Gazzana sitting alongside the arena, a real privileged place to be here this evening. And alongside me is the winner from the 2009 Barcelona Grand Prix, Jess Curtin, joining me in the commentary box. Jess, good evening. Good evening, Phil. Good evening, everybody at home. It's great to be with you this evening for this wonderful Grand Prix. And there you can see on the screen that we're going to have a time allowed of 85 seconds, just in case any of you didn't see that for the course that's coming up. Oh, let's have a look at some of the riders taking part. We've got uh, Sami Aldehan for Egypt, followed by Ellen Whitaker in that first six for Great Britain. Nicholas Delmont for France. Second yesterday in the Negrata Cup with this horse, Alanine Devan. Martin Fuchs there coming in in 10th, European champion. Marlin uh, Modolo Zanatelli from Brazil, recent individual gold medalist from the Pan American James. Eric van der Vluten in a Ben Mare for Great Britain with Carlson 86, representing Spain, Sergio Avare Moye. Marcus Enning, former world number one for Germany with Funky Fred. Kevin Stout for France, another former world number one. Eduardo Menzies, Amelia Bicocchi for Italy. Peter Devos for Belgium. Stephanie Holman with the wonderful Flips Little Sparrow representing Sweden. Steve Gerdat, world number ones, coming in in 34th place. And Otherick von Eckermann for Sweden. And that just after Steve. Peter Maloney for Ireland. Stein Endresen, who was fifth man for the team in the team event here for Norway. And last to go in there, Beat Manley, former world champion for Switzerland in 44th place. Now, there may be just one question who the first rider in, Jess, because there's been different start lists have been coming out and been printed over the last few minutes. And uh, we've got Louis Philippe de Asvedo Filo, and your list hasn't actually got him on your list, has he? No, um, the lists have changed a little bit, but uh, for, as, the, as the day went on, I mean, we had a competition on here this afternoon, and there has been a little bit of juggling going backwards and forwards, because as you know, the teams do have their reserve rider with them have the opportunity to bring in um, a change of rider uh, both for the challenge cup and for those who are in the final on sunday so there has been a little bit of of uh, doing and making today between the teams because obviously not only is the final uh, very prestigious with a lot of money but there is also this challenge cup is a prestigious competition and uh, you know team teams have been just juggling a little backwards and forwards and that's why we've had the start list just changing a little bit but it's not it's not something particularly unusual but yes we will start with uh, sammy el dehan um, and actually, there we see Philippe Azevedo. So, Philip, you know, um, what can I say? The two of us sitting <laughs> sitting up here having, having a we've, clue about anything. We've had, well, I've had three <laughs> different start lists in the last yeah. hour, so well, we'll, we'll make it up as we go along. Jim. Yeah, I think we should do that. I mean, we're more or less sure who's coming in, and uh, we'll, we'll recognise their faces when they come into the ring. So um, it's not just as much in a wing and a prayer as it sounds to everybody sitting at home, but uh, we'll soon get into the competition. And uh, there will be no course animation, so maybe I'll just chat to you a little bit about the course as he's coming into the ring. Santiago Varela has set up a difficult course. Of course, these horses jumping tonight are not the horses that will be jumping the Challenge Cup and the, the final on Sunday. So for many of the riders, it's their number two horse this weekend. A lot of up and coming young horses in this class, horses that are starting to make the step up to this level. And um, uh, we... Uh, we will be able to watch this. It's with a winning round, 25% of the starters will go in for sure to the jump off. That is 11, judging by our list, could change. But we're, yes, we're your, expecting your it. I can tell you, it's way. unbelievable. I've been working all day on my brain, Phil. Yeah, I've been, I've, been right doing, I've been doing my tables all day. <laughs> anyway, all the clear rounds or 11 will come into the jump off. And uh, Phil, would you like to introduce our first rider? First to get us underway for Brazil, Luis Felipe de Asvedo Filo with the 13-year-old gelding, Chaquito. 
just also mentioned, Jess, that's why I was fiddling around with my phone. The um, FEI today have uh, produced the new rankings lift, and I can confirm that Steve Gerd out of Switzerland remains in the world number one spot. It looks like our first rider has uh, a dinner appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you could say that. Um, I heard rumours that the course builder also has a dinner appointment this evening, and that's why that's why the, some of the jumps were a little bit bigger. No, all joking aside, we're we're very relaxed here this evening, and uh, uh, certainly uh, all joking aside, uh, Luis Felipe Azevedo didn't have the best day yesterday, and he came in, and you could just see his horse was really not comfortable over the first two fences, and he just wisely retired. I know that they had already planned to take him out of the team for the Challenge Cup tomorrow and uh, yesterday he had uh, uh, three down and uh, two time faults so uh, yeah um, was just not in form and now we move on and now we do go to uh, the plan that we had it's Sami Aldaham coming into the arena um, also with a horse that's just been out for a while and hasn't been jumping now up to this level so he also is just uh, really seeing how it's going to go this evening, especially under the floodlights. One of two Egyptian riders in the Grand Prix, the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. Here, wonderful evening, crowds packed in to here in the Real Club de Polo, the home of the 1992 uh, Equestrian Olympic competitions took place here. So, Sami Eldahan representing Egypt with WKD Exotic. And uh, maybe have an opportunity when Sammy is now in. I'll go through a little bit of the course um, as he's riding. We'll get a little bit the distances, a few heights. Uh, when I spoke to Sammy before, he didn't expect to be one of those riders taking part in the jump off. He's expecting just a little bit of a novice round from this horse this evening. Um, as we know, the Egyptians all have their number one string gone to Morocco ready for their Olympic qualifier next week. So number one, just a nice oxygen start, 1 meter 46, 1 for 48 wide. Number two, 150 high. And here they have to make a choice whether they go inside, as he is going to do to save the time, as it's a winning round. 1 meter 55, this vertical, 20 meters, uh, 23 meters 50, long four strides. 1 meter 52 60 and he's gone inside now the course builders did not measure inside for the time that is 155 that vertical and he took the risk of going inside and it's gone went inside here as well um, whether this is all necessary but of course being so early in the course you need to take these chances this line rides quite quite nice compared to what it walked i'll go through that exactly the distances for the next rider sammy making a very good job of that all the distance quite flowing in that line with a waiting distance to the plank. Then over this oxer number 10, 1 meter 52, 1 meter 50 wide. Remembering these are not the horses for the championship going today. A little bit spooky this combination, a little bit of a play with the colors here. Coming out is a bit taller, 155. Nice five strides to this wider oxer. They really have to balance on the seven strides, 19 meters 40 to that vertical. And then they're coming home to fence number 14, a long course today. Big oxer, big meaty oxer, that last jump. And this this is a really what the course builders already expected, that there would be mistakes. And Sammy coming home inside the time allowed, of course, because he took those inside turns. Four down, 16 folds for Sammy Eldahan and WKD Exotic for Egypt. play a factor for those places if we have less than 11 clears if we if we have more than 11 clears only the clears will go into the jump off and if we have less than 11 clears it'll either be somebody with a time fault or the fastest four and there we see Ellen Whitaker coming into the ring uh, Ellen Whitaker for Great Britain Great to see Ellen back at the top of the sport. Ellen Whittaker for Great Britain with Jack van der Katten Yaya. Katten High. Jack van der Katten High. Let's go for that. Ellen Whittaker for Great Britain. 
I think you've got a good job of pronouncing that. Um, this is horse Ellen bought from uh, Max Cooner, and uh, she's been just bringing him up carefully uh, through the levels. Ellen really coming back. She's had two kids, and now really there is her husband on the kiss and cry. And um, she's really coming back to the top levels, going on the team here with her other horse. And uh, certainly one of the candidates just quietly working her way towards next year, of course. She will be one of those in the, in the candidacy for the Olympics if it keeps going. And this horse has had some very good results. He's been jumping well on the English circuit. And um, he hasn't yet jumped something like this, but uh, Ellen and her dad feeling that this is a good moment just to bring him up. And she goes outside here, which I think is perhaps the easiest turn if you want to come inside. Beautifully done on the fear on the four. This turn inside is also possible. But that's a very tall vertical. One meter fifty-five, that longing vertical. What and was the time allowed, Jess? Sorry. Eighty-five seconds. Fine. Yeah. And here she's gone outside again to this double. Um, the turn back there also not so nice, especially with that back bar higher. Eleven meters thirty inside, and then a nice four strides. She does that well. She jumps it on the right just to close the six strides. It's a little bit flat, the six strides, and then this six strides is really short. So it's really a rider's line here. They need to make a very good job of judging the length of their horse's stride and picking the line. This ox are just not to underestimate, one meter fifty wide. And then this rather spooky, I don't know if we're going to get a good camera angle from the front. A little spooky there, you can see those rails coming in. A little bit of an optical illusion. Now she just gets caught by the back bar in the middle, it's 155 wide. That's a wide oxer. The f five got strides got a little short for her there. And um, as you can see now that we're already on 82 seconds as she's making the turn to the last, she's going to be over the time allowed. Uh, she stops the clock at 88.42, so the two fences down, one time penalty, nine faults in all for Ella Whitaker for Great Britain with Jack Van Ter Katten. Hiya. Yeah, a couple of young mistakes there, really, but this horse jumped a very secure ride with Ellen. And um, there you can see just jumps up and just touches that back bar and then just gets the next jump following on in this line. And, uh, but I think in all, she'll be quite happy with, with that ride from this horse. Now representing our hosts here in Barcelona for Spain, 23-year-old Leticia Rivagil with Esperanza de Kelm. Just a nine-year-old, this mare, Jess. Yeah, but a uh, nice, nice mare. Um, she bought this horse from Pedro Sanchez Aleman, and uh, just saw her walk in the course with her trainer earlier. And yeah, she's a girl. She's got plenty of experience at young rider level and everything. She's been doing very well, won a class in Gijon, and she's had a Grand Prix win. You know, she's a young girl, but she does have a good bit of experience under her belt. And uh, this is really a nice horse, but just something like this they wouldn't yet have done. So this is a big step for them here this evening. Nice jump over number one. Already really taking her time. You can see every stride adjusting and uh, decides also to go out, which I feel is really for this time allowed. It's really necessary to go inside to this jump. Takes the option there, jumps the five, that was good. Set it up really well. And again, she's going outside, which I think at this particular place is sensible. Tall vertical this, not very inviting for the horses to jump, as you can see. Even going the long way doesn't sometimes work out. Riding forward into the combination, that 11 meters 30 is no problem. Yeah, she jumps across that ox. She comes on the left and then jumps across to the right and pays the penalty. The horse losing the balance off the hind legs. That six got very short for her, but she did a good job. Again, this course is really a rider's course being set by Santiago Varela. There's nothing out here which is really big and meaty and difficult, but it's technical, it's careful, triple combination, a little bit, little bit funny colors and they're very much a rider's course. And she just decides to call it a day. You can just see the whole way, a little bit the horse on the hand and not really able to get in between the leg and the hand. And uh, decides that this moment in front of her whole crowd was just a little bit too much today. 
Leticia Rivergill. Esperenza Descalem, they retire. Just a nine year old. Plenty of time. Yeah, and this, this girl has plenty of time. I mean, she's got experience under her belt, but it's like everything. You need exposure to this competition, and this is this is a very big thing for a young rider to be riding this Grand Prix here tonight under the floodlights, packed arena, and all the Spanish coming out to enjoy themselves here. And, uh, yeah, it's a big moment. And now for Ireland. Dara Kenny with sweet Trisha. Dara Kenny, who we were saying yesterday was 11th in the world rankings. Well, the Longin FEI world rankings have just been released today, and Dara Kenny has now moved into the world's top 10. He's now in 10th in the rankings, Dara Kenny, for Ireland, top Irish rider in the rankings, a great clear in the Nations Cup yesterday, helping Ireland getting into that top eight. Dara Kenny, sweet Trisha for Ireland. Yeah, and like you said, Phil, uh, well deserved in the top 10 of the world ranking has been having really going from strength to strength. Rider that can ride a lot of different horses has unbelievable um, owner support, really a lot of a lot of people behind him and a lot of horses that he gets to ride. And you can just see straight already, number one to two, takes the direct line, decides to go outside here. Interesting to see how he'll do the best. But Sweet Trisha is an inexperienced horse at this level. He just started to ride her at the end of end of Florida, so that would have been March time. So he obviously feels that she's very careful. Turns her up to that 155, jumps it fantastic. That was a super turn, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. When she won the Grand Prix, the three-star Grand Prix, he won with her in Knocka this summer. And uh, he really thinks a lot of her. You see, she's really clever, really careful, backing up there. But this, would she have jumped at this level 154? She would have jumped the 150. That would have been a 150 that she won in Knocka. Okay. But it, there's 150s and 150s. Yeah. Um, you know, where this is a five-star 150, and what she won was a three-star 150. And um, you know, under the floodlights, it's uh, for some horses, it's um, quite impressive. But she's really settled down, and I have the feeling, Dara, he did make that one inside turn, but he. You just have the feeling he's slightly trying to protect her, and he did go well out to that triple combination to really give her a chance to take a look at it. And uh, she just wasn't able to cope with the, the, the colours. That was for an inexperienced horse. She really was caught by the colours. But uh, I think he's going to be for sure disappointed with the result, but very happy with this ride from this horse. Really a horse for the future. Dara Kenny for Ireland completes with two fences down, a one-time penalty. 85 seconds, the time allowed. Nine faults and all. Dara Kenny, sweet Trisha for Ireland. Yeah, you can just see she's watching into the triple combination, really trying to, to understand those colours and just gets carried, really just gets carried through it. Just slightly uh, young young horse mistakes through there. It really It is an ugly combination and it takes a while before they understand exactly what's going on. Otto Becker, German chef, to keep waiting for his Christian Almond. Christian Almond for Germany. Also in the top ten in the world, in tenth at the moment, Christian Almond. Take a chance on me, Zed. Former Olympic medalist. World Cup winner. One of the most successful riders on the circuit. And take a chance on me, one of the most beautiful horses on the circuit. <laughs> take a chance on me, a son of the amazing Talabay Z, Christian's partners, produced by his partner, Julianne Melchior. Did a great job producing Talabay and then giving it to Christian to take on to one great success after another. And this son of Talabay also going really well with Christian. He's uh, really coming up into the top sport, won in great style the Grand Prix in Paris earlier this year in July. And many, many top placings in five-star level. Uh, 
did you see that graphic there, Jess? The, they've changed the time allowed to 90 seconds. It just flashed up at the bottom of the screen. Well done, Phil. He takes six strides there. Came inside, jumped on the angle very quietly. Just take that extra stride. He used to do that with his horse's dad as well. Just slipped in that extra stride. Horse with a lot of blood. And Christian just likes to keep it nice and steady. The time of light of 90 seconds is really going to make things a lot easier for these riders this evening. It's quite, quite a big difference to go from the 85 to the 90. Interesting. This is copy of riding down through that line. I have to say, beautifully done. Every stride in balance. Lovely collection. Take a chance on me listening to Christian. And uh, so far, this is really a beautiful ride to watch. Lovely finishing off the turn there. The horse straight through the body. This horse, as you can see, more experienced. No problem with that triple combination. Beautiful over that oxer. Christian making this looking, look like a little training ride. Oh, lucky touch on that one. I nearly gave him the kiss of death there. Coming to the last jump. Look at the time. He's got a time penalty. However, that was a beautiful round from Christian Alman and take a chance on me, Zed. So 85 seconds. It said there had a time penalty. We saw a catch and said 90 seconds the time allowed. And on my yeah, no, other screen, it. Yeah. on my other screen, they've actually now yeah. showing him clear. So we're going to go with the clear. Ignore the time allowed. We're the, sorry, ignore the one time penalty. We're going to go. Christian Alman, take a chance on me. Said for Germany is gone clear. That is our first clear in the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona here this evening. Yeah, and a really well-deserved clear. But you could see he was just over the... He was 85.07. Um, the others have been 86, 88, 82. Hmm. I wonder about this time allowed. Is it maybe too kind? 44 competitors coming forward, 25%. So 11 into the jump off or all the clears. Should they be more than 11? Now for Mexico. Paolo Amalibia with the nine year old mare, Julieta. Owned by Paola and her husband, Federico Fernandez, another great representative of the Mexican show jumping scene internationally. Yeah, and very exciting. Paola has just changed her nationality. Of course, she's been successfully for Spain, uh, Spanish-born, but yeah, she's been married now to Federico, and they really do everything together. And um, yeah, I think it's quite a quite a natural decision for a rider when they marry to um, to change nationality. We saw it with uh, Meredith Michaels Bierbaum; she changed from American nationality to German when she married Marcus and moved to Germany. And, I, I, it's, it's been a little bit of a discussion for Paula over the last year and of course with the Olympics coming up from a sporting point of view uh, as a rider, as a sportsman you have to decide a little bit what it is what you want and she, she really took her time and decided and she feels she belongs in Mexico she feels comfortable with the Mexicans and uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good decision for her to do and uh, hopefully it'll bring her a lot of luck also in her career and strengthen the already very good uh, Mexican team and um, also Paula here for the first time with the uh, new trainer Marcus Bierbaum has been training with Vincent Bourne and had some very good results and very good, came a long way and now I decided just she just needs to have a, something a little different so I just started to train also now with Marcus Bierbaum was a very good round and G just that early fence down so four faults for Pala and Olivia with Julieta for Mexico yeah just just gets caught out by that plank you know for Julieta it came really easy just lobbing along those nice distances and then the second six strides were just that little bit difficult for Paula to get her to put her body weight again behind 
to really have that push up and respect for the plank. Now we go to France. Part of the team in the London FEI Jumping Nations Cup. France have finished second yesterday, going into the top eight on Sunday. But tonight, it's about the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix here in Barcelona. Nicolas Delmotte with Alanine Devin. This combination was second in the Negrita Cup yesterday morning. Nicolas, a very, very stylish rider. Didn't have the best of rounds yesterday, had nine faults yesterday. But the French still very strong and uh, into the final on Sunday, and he'll be wanting to improve on that. This horse, relatively inexperienced, nine years old, just coming up to this level. He makes a nice turn inside there. Moves up for the five. The riders and the horses really have to react when they turn inside, jump that vertical, have to really react and move up quick on the five. This horse really a lot of blood, always taking him to the jump. Nice feeling for a rider, just keeping, always keeping, traveling. Beautifully done here, really well ridden from Nicholas. Yeah, they just see the horse twisted. The whole line, he did a really good job and he's just balancing there, but he was able to get the six strides, but Alanine just kept going. Beautiful jumping through the triple. Horse with a lot of quality. I'm really seeing that this this horse really just paid a little bit for the inexperience, but the quality really there. Plenty of jump, careful. Nice ride for Nicholas, disappointing mistake. Just one down, four folds for Nicolas Delmont and Alanine Devin for France. How do you think it's jumping, Jess? I think it's it's jumping actually very well. I think uh, this line is is uh, really the difficult thing is after opening the horses, the combination, and then the water jump to get them really back for that plank, but. It's a little bit those horses without the experience that are getting caught out. You know, the riders are asking them to come back, but the horses are keeping traveling. It's a little bit um, novice mistakes that we're getting, but generally the course is not causing an awful lot of trouble. Uh, up to this point, we've, we've really only seen one very exper uh, experienced horse, and that one very experienced horse went clear. So it's interesting to see how it's going to unfold. Certainly with the time allowed, the riders do have a little bit of a chance now to take their time. So could be interesting to see if he gets more than the 11 clears. Well, I'm sure this man has got a few followers in the crowds here in Barcelona. The stable's not very far away from the Royal Club de Polo where we're sitting. For Spain, Primitivo Nive Zorella with Eichen von der Wetherbach. Well done, Phil. <laughs> Some of these names are a little difficult. Yeah, for sure, Primitivo, he's going to have a lot of, a lot of friends here well-known in the area, riding for the open sports stables and uh, himself, of course, dealing a lot with the horses, got a good business here in Spain. And uh, he's not somebody that we would have really present on the big international scene, but of course, when he has the opportunity to jump here in front of his home crowd, he'll be wanting to do his very best here today. say Phil you know if you're in Barcelona and it, it's an evening like this there's nothing nicer to do than to come to the polo club and to enjoy the atmosphere in the evening and I mean it's one of the most lovely things between the combination between the competitions to go out to the field in the back where they've got uh, everything that you could possibly want to eat uh, you can go shopping there's for the children there's there's lots of rides and that's it's actually on the polo, on oh, the polo ground. That's it's, beautiful. It's, yeah. it's beautiful and lovely to see the Spanish people all dressed up coming out, families. It's 
such a great atmosphere here in Barcelona. It's a very, very special event. The Longines plank clearly is playing a part, Jess. Yes, the plank, the white plank played a big role yesterday. The Longines plank is annoying them today. And, um, yeah, the plank is... Uh, a lot of horses just don't have respect for a plank. It's quite funny. They, they have respect for the poles, but very often the plank, it just looks like nothing. And many, many horses, even many very careful horses, don't really have respect for the plank. And the last as well, so with a time penalty, 17. Faults and all for Primitivo Thieves of Rilla with Eichen Vonda Wereback. Yeah, Primitivo really giving his best around this course. Uh, of course, he and this horse, or this horse particularly, not used to jumping at this level, but jumping in front of the home crowds in, in this Grand Prix competition, and he did his best, and um, he'll be able to go and have a cerveza now with his friends. Clip at top of the screens there of the warm up arena. Now the European champion, the world number two for Switzerland, Martin Fuchs with Chica BZ. What a last few months this man has had. Individual silver medal, silver medalist at the Longines FEI World Cup final on the podium 12 months ago at the World Equestrian Games and European champion with the wonderful Clooney this a different grey Chica BZ Martin Fuchs Chica BZ for Switzerland yeah Martin here today with Chica and uh, riding silver shine on the team. Clooney was in New York last, last week for the final of the GCT, and he just is at home this weekend. So Martin bringing these two here, and Chica owned by Adolfo Uri, a great supporter for many years, uh, supporting Martin's uncle, Marcus. And um, now he has this lovely Chica with, Mar with Martin, and uh, they've already had very good results together. And... Uh, he really would be one of the ones that we would be expecting to come into the jump off. You can see the really experienced riders, they're taking the direct line from one to beautiful to see. This is <laughs> like a training session for younger riders at home. Beautiful coming on the line, the direct route from one to two, and it sets them up beautifully into the turn to number three. Oh, yeah, you could just see jump number three and just a little quiet on the five strides, and it's a little dark in that corner, and Chica really backed off. You could just see, looked into the shadows and really backed off. Caught Martin slightly by surprise there. He wasn't expecting Chica to do that, and, yeah, he just decides to go home. So, Marty Fuchs with the 10-year-old Chica BZ for Switzerland retires. Yeah, just you just see looked at the shadow backed off and then got caught on the back bar. So let's just talk through his retirement there then, Jess. You know, it's a young horse. So he just doesn't want to push it here, he just wanna take it easy and Yeah, it's sometimes you different situations, different reasons. Um Cheek is a very careful horse and you can see here when you look there on the screen you can see the shadow. And that was a typical situation of the horse, you know, backing off and taking off in a little bit in front of the shadow. Had quite a heavy mistake. And uh, like I say, it is a very careful horse. And I think Martin felt under the floodlights. He didn't want to continue. He just felt, OK, you know, I'll just take I'll just take Chica out. There's a class tomorrow. Um, I can put in a small class tomorrow without the floodlights and just get the confidence back. Now for all Spain. As you told Garcia, Orfi. Dubrek, 17-year-old gelding off de Dubrek. As it Torre Garcia, who was the fifth man in the squad for the London FEI Jumping Nations Cup final, which we've got going on this weekend here. Yeah, and it's interesting to see what he's going to do here tonight because, you know, they do have the opportunity to swap over one of their riders tomorrow. And, um, yeah, he might just be... Uh, 
in question for the team for the Challenge Cup tomorrow. Unfortunately for the Challenge Cup tomorrow, those who were with us yesterday saw that the Spanish got knocked out by 0.45 of a second over the three riders' times um, yesterday, and with that puts them into the Challenge Cup um, for tomorrow evening and not into the final eight on Sunday. And with that, their last chance of qualifying for the Olympics next year is out the window. So it was really tears all round in Spain last night. Very sad for them. Really well fought from the team. But sport is tough. This was a little bit of a difficult counter. You can just see he's trying to set him up in front of the jumps. Gets caught out in the middle of a triple combination. You know, it's hard to tell when you see a horse like this. Sometimes they look a little bit stiff, but the horses, when they can, when they have a little too much respect for the lights and a little fear for the lights, sometimes they become a little stiff in their bodies. And um, that was a good round from him. It a was bit disappointing. One fence down, four faults for Hezitore Garcia and Orfi Dubrec for Spain. So we've had 11 of the 44 competitors coming forward for the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix here at the Royal Club de Polo. We had just the one clear at the moment for Germany. Christian Armand would take a chance on me. And 25% of the riders will go through to the jump off or all clears should there be more than 11. So the rounds of four faults, we've got three on four faults. Nicolas Delmont for France. Hezi Torre Garcia, we've just seen for Spain, and Paolo Amalibia for Mexico. But Christian Alman, just the only clear. That was just a nice moment there on the camera as, as Jesus was, was finished and his groom was standing waiting for him at the entrance to the arena with a big smile on his face. Lovely to see when the whole team fevers with their rider and appreciates when a horse and rider, even if they haven't jumped clear, that they've made a good job. Teamwork is dream work, Phil. We know all about that. <laughs> Absolutely right, Jess. Or would you rather be there? <laughs> I know. I'd mu much prefer to be here, would you feel? Absolutely. Who would want to be sitting in the VIP being wined and dined and having a great time? I think we're having just as much fun here, and we don't even need the wine to do it. Well, talking about alcohol, this horse is Gin D. Bart Bless for the Netherlands. Six in the world rankings, Bart Bless. Disappointing last fence down yesterday in the first round of the Nations Cup final. Yeah, poor Bart. He's had uh, two situations now that have uh, put him in an awkward situation, having the last jump down. But really, a, a jockey that can only be only be happy with his performance over the last couple of seasons, going from strength to strength, and uh, from nowhere came up into the Dutch team for the European Championships this year was their reserve man and uh, well deserved he's had some super results with this and his other horse of course Jin D we've seen before under Peter De Vos uh, before being sold to Bart Bless and SF Equestrian and uh, always has been a very handy man in the saddle field job of this year. Just see motivating Jindy. And see the way that he rides him, sits a little bit above him, rides him a little like a jockey. Oh, just has a little problem on the last turn. Well ridden and that's a clear, that's our second clear, plenty of time. On that new time of 90 seconds, the time allowed, that is clear number two, clear for Bart Bless and Jindy for the Netherlands. Yeah, that was a piece of very good riding from Bart and uh, Jindy jumping very r routine around the course. A horse that's seen a lot of things now, of course, at this stage. And uh, not the floodlights or the spooky jumps could upset him. And uh, he'll be a hot contender now in the jump off. go back to Germany Laura Klapark 
Ban Tabelu. Laurie just 25 years old. Like we heard with Hazy Torre Garcia for Spain, Laura was the fifth member of the German squad, so she might rock up over the weekend in the Nations Cup final. Yeah, I think with Bantu Balu, she's, she's not expecting to come in the team on Sunday. They're pretty, pretty stable. And um, I think she's, she's not expecting to be called up. And that's why Bantu Balu going this Grand Prix this evening. And of course, Laura, for her young age, also her record, very good, does have a bronze medal at the World Championships last year with the team and had some great results for the German team over the last years. Bantu Balu, formerly ridden by Switzerland's Walter Gabatula, before coming to Laura. And she's just a little bit nervous early. She said Bantu just could, could be a little bit spooky under the lights. And you can just see her giving already quite a, a determined ride over the first few fence, just making sure that he's really on the leg, you know, that she has, she's supporting him and, and just making him feel comfortable in the lights. You just see that she's always got her leg on. You can just see coming to that jump that He's, he's not feeling completely comfortable under the lights. And uh, Laura just having to, to really put the leg and support him. She's having quite a lot of work to do around here with him today. And that jump that she had down, of course, has the water underneath. And uh, with the lights, the water becomes even more blue and a little bit sparkling. And the view of the camera that we have from the front, you can just see at the moment of takeoff that he's just that little bit unsure. Laura doing a good job here supporting him and a little bit what we'd say carrying him around the course. Goes into sixth place with that four faults at number 89.44. The fastest four fault round at the moment, 81. 0.83 for Nicholas Delmott that that might play a part in the top 25% we'll see going forward. Laura Klapek for with Pantu, Bantu Balu for Germany. 89.44 seconds, four faults. Yeah, I could just see there where she had the mistake. She was really supporting him and really putting leg on because she expected him to look into the water and if anything, just ever so slightly close on that jump. But uh, she did have enough of work to do and did a good job. Now for Spain. Carolina Arusa Garcia Obregon with Untrapid to Pachetti. Yeah, very nice girl, Carolina, and she's really worked her way up over the years. Um, I've been seeing her for very many years at, at, at the shows in Spain, and she's always out working her horses and and very, very keen uh, in the sport to really come up to the top level. And she's done it now. She was in, in the final in Athens and did really a good job. And this horse that she's riding, he wouldn't really have that much experience. Although he is now 11, he wouldn't really be super experienced at this, this level, uh, level. So she will also have her work cut out here today. You can just see when you come nice on the angle one to two, it really sets you up to go inside. Although she decided to go outside, it sets you up to go beautifully inside here. But I think some of the riders are a little nervous to take the inside line to number three because it just makes you jump on the angle and uh, makes that distance of 23.50 just that little bit longer. And then the five strides, they feel that just could be a little bit too long for some horses. She's keeping him really motivated. She has her leg on, keeping contact with his mouth, really keeping him between the leg and the hand. Oh, a lot of work to do for the six strides, but she gets it done. Good girl. Oh. 
just totally misjudged that. He jumped the vertical and then he, he completely misjudged on the colors there of the Oxer. Just twists his body slightly in the air and got caught out in that city of Barcelona jump. One down, four faults into fifth place goes Carolina Aresu Garcia Obregon with Untrapid de Paichetti. Yeah, another good round in there this evening, another Spanish good round. She, she comes in quite forwards, uh, quite determined coming in and ends up getting a little bit too close to the Oxer. And of course he twists then to try and get out of the way. But I think she's reasonably pleased with that round. Horse jumped well and she did a good job. And I'm just showing we've got two clears so far for the Netherlands bar players for Germany, Christian Armand. Just the two clears from the first 14 competitors. Now the leading Brazilian rider in the world rankings, Marlin Modolo Zandatelli with Diesel GP Dubois Madame. Individual gold medalist from the recent Pan American Games. And overnight in the new world rankings has moved up five places into the top 20. He's now 17th in the world. Yeah, Marlon, another rider who's really riding on the crest of a wave at the moment and a uh, very good rider. And this is an interesting combination. This horse new to him, Diesel, owned by Schroeder Stables and Tal Milstein. And uh, interesting to see. He's quite a, quite a strong horse, a lot of quality, but quite, quite a strong horse. It'll be interesting to see Marlon has chosen to put the bitless bridle. This horse, of course, was being ridden by Pier Giorgio Bucci before coming to Marlon. Just see Marlon taking a little bit of time through the corners. Horse just a little bit feisty with his head. Just not really accepting completely the Hackamore. Although Marlon, seeing that with the Hackamore, he has a chance just to keep the connection and support him. Can be a super bridal for some horses. Uh, this is not looking too bad at all for the first attempt. We, you just see Diesel. <laughs> he's uh, he's a big, strong horse. And Although he shakes his head and gets feisty, then he relaxes a little bit when he notices that there's nothing nothing in his mouth. Yeah, well, I just had to push for that oxer a little bit, getting a silly mistake there. But this partnership looking like it could play some music in the future. Another one with just the one fence down, four faults for Marlin Madolo Zanatelli. For Brazil, into seventh place. Just two clears at the moment. Now also for the Netherlands. Eric van der Bleuten with Wuchkin 19. Jess, somebody you must have ridden against many, many times over the last few years. Yeah, and always with great pleasure. Eric, a great competitor, great person, and uh, one, of, one of the really nice people in our sport. And so wonderful that he has become this chance from Marta Ortega to in 
the twilight years of his career to be he took, able to he ride took a few, He took a sort of a bit of a step back, didn't he, for a little bit? Well, he was really uh, doing everything for Michael, uh, yeah. for Michael and for Eric Jr. And um, Michael's career was really taking off. And uh, Eric himself, you know, produced Verdi in the, in the early years. And he didn't really have much to ride. And then he's, he was doing a trainer for the Spanish team. And um, Marta Ortega, of course, was, was at that stage on, on the Spanish team. And then he sort of started to train um, with Mart Martega as a personal trainer for Martega, for, for Marta Ortega. And uh, out of that, he's grown a friendship and a support. And Marta now owns many of their horses, including Wunschkind. And um, both Eric and, um, and son Michael riding on Marta's Madrid in Motion team. And they've actually had two wins this year which is really nice to see father and son on winning team together and yeah it's it's a uh, it's a lovely story for eric to to really have this great support and have the success um, at, at this stage of his career and wunchkin really a horse that has grown from strength to strength over the last couple of years really done some very good things with with eric Great camera angle over the combination. Still clear. Yeah, there's some really good camera shots. This morning I saw the the course walk with this 360 degrees camera, which is um, potentially something really, really good. Coming great. into the last, he's still clear. Plenty of time on the clock, and that is a super clear number two for the Netherlands. That's a clear for Eric van der Bleuten with Wichkin 19 for the Netherlands. Three clears so far from the uh, what is it? 16 riders of the 44 coming forward. Yeah, fantastic for Eric to be in the jump. Of course, here in Spain, owner Marta is here with her family, and you know, Massimo Dutti is is one of the bigger sponsors here at the show. And it's it's always lovely when it works out like that. And Eric is really in the sport, and everybody who's come to watch can have a really nice evening and enjoy it and enjoy it. be part of the adrenaline. Always a great story. That's what our sport's all about now. Great crowd here at the Royal Cup de Poe. Spain looking for a clear round. They've got a, quite a fast four fault from Jesus Torre Garcia. Will this be a clear for Spain? Former Olympian representing Spain, Pilar Lucrecia Corden, with the 11 year old gelding Trix Tracks. That is a lot easier to pronounce. Trix Tracks. Trix. No. It's actually not that easy, you know, to name horses, Phil. If you sit and you have a fold, and you know the breeding, and then of course people like to involve in the in the breeding and the horses. Name. When you sit down and you've got two or three foals, and then they grow up, and it's time to start giving them a name. It's not that simple, I can tell you. I've sat there a few evenings wondering, this name or that name, and then in the end, the horse has to get registered, and you oh, just give him any name, whatever <laughs> comes up. A pillar, of course, she has been around in the sport in Spain now for a long time and uh, always very dedicated to her sport, loves her horses. And, uh, yeah, Trick Strikes under the floodlight, of course, for him. She just wants to keep his, keep his attention on the jumps and not, not to have him getting, losing his uh, concentration with the floodlights. The lights do look very good here. I mean, you hardly see a shadow, I have to say. They are fantastic, and it's, it's so important, the lights, when, when you have a floodlight, competition the lighting has to be top yet sometimes you can't help it there can be a little bit of a shadow in front of a jump and quite simply for some horses this very artificial light you know it's bright it sparkles and for some horses it, it really is um, quite impressive for them and you will find that you know maybe even in the case of Martin Fuchs's Chica there are some horses it, it's just better not to jump under floodlight because they, they do get scared
Ooh, gets a bit deep coming in there. That was a good job, oh. really. Yeah, really great camera angle there. You can really see where the oh. horse and rider are. Yeah. Didn't get away with it twice. No. As I heard the groans <laughs> from the crowds here. Spain looking for that first clear. Yeah, there is just one of those situations. He came around the corner, saw his own shadow, and now he's just terrified himself. And, uh, you know, this is just, just the moment where we're, it's, it's not that easy for a rider. The, the feeling is, do I just sit there and, and, and wait for it to happen, or do I just tell him to keep going? When he, you could just see he jumped the vertical, came to the corner and scared himself, and, and just at that moment caught Pillar out. And there was just a moment where the two of them didn't really know what to do. And, uh, that was a bit of a shame for Pillar. She jumped a good round other than that. Well, it was a great round up towards the end, until the end there. So Pilar Lucrecia Corden tricks tracks for Spain. 13 faults in all. Oh, he stretched for that back bar, but just he didn't really try to set him up for the five, but the canter was not there. And then she was and ended up just being a little, little off, and he just tried to get it, but it just wasn't possible. Now for Switzerland. Arthur Gustavo de Silva with in and stop van der Voorhof. And this could be a very interesting round again, Phil, because um, Arthur de Silva, he is the reserve rider on the Swiss team this weekend. They're in the final on Sunday. And um, they were in the, in the team to, the, together, the two of them last year, finished yeah. in, in eighth place. Yeah. And the question is, will they make a change? Will they will they bring one out and put him in on Sunday? Are they just going to have a look at him now tonight, see how he jumps? This is an interesting one. It's a non-stop horse with great scope. Turo changed his his nationality to Swiss when he was riding for Marcus Fuchs at the stage. Marcus Fuchs was just deciding to stop and had some lovely horses from Adolfo Uri. That's when Turo took his Swiss nationality. Just gets caught out on that, that six strides to the Oxer. Just got a little bit carried into the front bar there and then did a really good job on the short six afterwards to the nasty little Longines plank. Just got so deep to the Oxford. He was trying to just keep him off there, but just got carried in so deep. Was just holding him off and then got caught out. Two down, eight volts for Arthur Gustavo de Silva with in and stop Van der Voorhof for Switzerland into 10th place. Yeah, interesting what you have to keep. And Andy Kistler and trainer Thomas Fuchs will do with their team now for Sunday, whether they're going to make a change or not. Interesting. in the arena here in Barcelona. Team gold medalist from the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro for France. Penelope Lepreveau with Varenne Dubré. A brilliant clear in the first day of the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup final yesterday. France to stay in the top eight if any second overall yesterday 
Penelope, who has already been on a Longy in FEI. Nations Cup winning team here in Barcelona back in 2013. Amongst many other successes. Yeah, you can just see Penny look. This horse just takes him up to the triple combination, let him have a little bit of a look. Um, of course, when you're coming and you've had a chance to see a few of the riders go ahead of you and see where mistakes are being made, there is often the feeling to uh, just go in and give the horse a little bit of a look. This horse, quality horse, just a little bit complicated. And he looked well able to manage it. She has Henri Proudhon with her here this weekend. Out working the horse this morning and Henri just looking on. It's nice also for a really top rider just to have someone on the ground. Boy, she's taking some risk there, spinning back up to that 155 vertical. And she paid for it. That was quite a quite a turn back. That was a turn back as if she was sitting sitting on a machine. And this horse. As you can see, you know, she just has quite a little bit of work to do to keep him straight through his body, to keep him balanced. There on the line here, really working hard to try to get the six strides and still in the air, having to work with her upper body to get him over the jump. Still a horse that looks not completely finished in his body. Certainly has quality and plenty of jump. She goes inside again to the last jump, obviously trying to be the fastest on the four, just in case she could get into that jump. And off. she has achieved being second fastest as a four fold panel up. Leprevo for France puts her with that four faults into fifth place. Fastest four fault, her fellow countryman Nicholas Delmott. So four faults, 82.32 into fifth goes Penelope Leprevo for France with Varenne Debray. Yeah, I'd imagine she'd be kicking herself for that one because she really spun back up to that vertical. It was uh, quite a risk with this gangly legged horse. for Great Britain. Recently on the podium at the European Championships, twice individual silver, team bronze, former Olympic team gold medalist from the London Olympics, Ben Mayer, for Great Britain with Carlson, 86. And as you can see there, Phil Ben, just like Penny Lope, comes into the ring, canders up the triple combination, just gives Carlson a chance to have a look at that because obviously it's, it's really getting dark now. I mean, all we can see is the floodlights, the floodlights, the moon, and the lights from the Fairmont Hotel next door. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's actually quite nice, isn't it? It's rather lovely. <laughs> and it's really nice to see how the, all the crowds here enjoying this evening. It's really like a festival here, not only a festival of good sport, but a, a festival of eating and drinking and having a good time with friends for the Spanish and Ben of course is the man of the moment just crowned GCT winner last week of the series silver medal at the European FEI Longines European Championships in Rotterdam and, uh, so they his which he's not got here this weekend but his wonderful Hall Explosion W it, that, that is nearly a machine, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely beautiful combination. The combination explosion is a very special horse, very talented, uh, lovely son of Chaco Blue, and uh, very talented horse. And Ben rides the horse to perfection. It's really wonderful to see the two of them together. And uh, of course, uh, explosion was in New York last week, so it's just not possible to be to be here uh, for the finals. Ben not in the team yesterday. They're going to bring him in to the team on Sunday and uh, Emily who had a little bit of an upsetting round yesterday had a fall yesterday 
she'll be coming out of the team to let her trainer come in on Sunday. And uh, this horse just been out for a while and Ben just bringing him back. And uh, I think with one fence down, it's not, not a bad ride. And 85.41 with that fence down, Jess puts him into seventh place. Ben Mayer for Great Britain. Fifth in the world rankings, top British rider in the rankings. So Ben Mayer at four, as I say, into seventh place. Just the three clear so far, Bart Bless and Eric van der Vleuten for the Netherlands and Christian Alman for Germany. Yeah, this this line is really sort of the line of, of, <laughs> of the moment. And uh, Santiago Varela again done a very good job this evening. Jumping into the combinations, 11 meters 30 inside. Then they just have that nice uh, four strides up to the Oxer, nice six strides. And the horse is just having the chance to get a little bit flat. Um, on the way around the corner, and like I said before, unbelievably important what line the riders take to suit their horse. Now for Sweden. Sweden who finished in the top eight of the Nations Cup final yesterday. And this lady played her part. Evelina Tovek for Sweden with winner to De La Hammond. Nine-year-old Zangazada Bird Gilding. You see the lights at the top of this. I was going to say, people may not realise it when you're here, but that shot when they come in, you can just see the polo ground with all the fairground lights and everything. It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. It, it's one of the most amazing places here to have this place in the middle of the city. I was trying to count the number of tennis courts, the amount of swimming pools around this place this morning, and. Uh, you know, I stopped counting tennis courts when I got to 20. <laughs> I just don't know where you can have that. And when you walk the arenas, I mean, there's the main arena here, the warm-up, out the back of the stables. There's about four different sand places where you can ride the horses. There's a big polo field. I mean, it's an exceptional place. It's a beautiful place, and that in the heart of such a wonderful city. And Evelina jumping a good ride here with winner too, obviously. This horse also coming up to this top level, like many of these horses. Owen oh, gets caught out exactly the same way as Ben on that flat six strides and again a horse that she's just bringing up to this level but this horse has really gone from strength to strength with Evelina and uh, she's doing a really good job of producing it together with her trainer Henrik van Ackerman but uh, you can't really sing the praises enough of this girl really making her way up to the top of the sport and dedicated and cool went to Calgary jumped to clear out came out of Calgary not even impressed. Everybody else around her jumping and leaping up in the air about what she just achieved, and she's just like, oh yeah, I was clear. <laughs> really great to see. Into ninth place with that four faults. So one down, four faults for Evelina Tovac, and winner to De La Hamant for Sweden goes in to ninth. Six actually came for her. The last stride ended up being too short. She just really got caught out with that. And again, that little angle that Santiago brings you on, a little bit of a bending line angle. So we really have to work hard to have the horses completely in balance to get that push off the ground behind that they need. 11 competitors will go into the second round of the Hyundai Cup of the City of Barcelona. Got three clears so far. 11 will go forward, or more than 11 if there are more than 11 clears. Spain looking for their first clear. The crowds here looking to cheer somebody home, one of their fellow countrymen. Will it be this man, Sergio Alvarez Moye, with MHS Attraction? Well, certainly he's, he's one of the Spanish favourites here. Another man who just cantered in and showed attraction, the triple combination. Which, of course, is perfectly allowed and acceptable. Absolutely, and it makes sense. I mean, let's face it, if, if there's something a bit spooky and you get a chance to have a look at it, you can work it out in your head a little bit better. But when you just come halfway through the course, come galloping around the corner, and suddenly there's this funny um, collection of rainbow stripes in front of you, and it can be quite daunting for an inexperienced horse. An experienced horse has seen this thing many times, and, and they know exactly, you know, they, they can focus on it. But 
for, for an inexperienced horse coming in there, it can be quite a difficult situation. And, oh, Sergio got caught out. Attraction, again, is quite a feisty horse and really gets caught out on that five strides a little bit too far away, hangs on the back bar. Yes, it doesn't look the easiest. It's a wonderful jumper. Yeah, very um, scopy. But, you know, numero uno di, di Montesemoli, it's... Uh, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of power, there's a lot of ambition in there. And uh, Sergio just always want, trying to just keep her calm and relaxed. An extremely talented horse. goes with that second fence down. Very quick round, but it was two fences down, so the eight volts will prevent them being into the second round. Eight volts, two fences down for Sergio Avelimoy, an MHS attraction. That was the quickest round that we've actually had so far. There's no being the fastest, the leaving, no. leaving the poles on the floor, but there's just that camera angle there. You could see that he just was a little bit off on the five strides. And here she jumps very high up and away from the front bar and just comes down on the back. Two clears for the Netherlands, one for Germany. Christian Armen, former world number one, has jumped clear. Here's a fellow countryman, also former world number one and multi-medalist from Germany, Marcus Enning, with the 14-year-old stallion, Funky Fred. I do love that when you say multi-medalist. <laughs> That's quite a... Multi-medalist and Funky quite a, Fred. Quite it a, all rolls off yeah, the tongue. Yeah, Absolutely. Oh, it's dinner time in Vib. Hmm. We are in Spain. Germany in the top eight, which probably made, people might think was pretty obvious in the Nations Cup final. They didn't make the top eight 12 months ago. Marcus on that team, jumping Sunday. Yeah, Marcus in great form at the moment. And Funky Fred, a horse that came slowly up the ranks as a young horse Marcus's um, brother Johannes rode him a lot and uh, when Marcus took over the reins beautifully ridden there nice bend and just setting him up for it and of course a son of his amazingly wonderful for pleasure which a lot of the younger people wouldn't remember at this stage but was an amazing horse both before him for Lars Nieberg and then for Marcus Enig Fred has really come come into himself over the last couple of seasons. Another one caught out in the front bar, yeah. Santiago Varela at his best. It's just so what exactly went wrong there then, Jess? Well, it's it's a literally it's it's the whole thing. You you come around the corner to the combination. The combination is 11 meters 30 inside, so it's two strides, but it's a really nice two strides, so the horse can jump forwards out of B. Then it's 1940. It's a really nice four strides up to this uh, oxer with the water underneath, so they can get a little bit flat. And then it's 27.50 around the corner to this oxer. Look at the time. Sorry, wow. Jess. Well, that, that, that will, you know what I think of Marcus's riding? That was a maestro. The moment that fence was down, he cut every corner he could. He stopped the clock in 79.06. That is the quickest full fault, the quickest round we've had. But that puts Marcus Henning and Funky Fred for Germany into fourth place with the four faults, but into fourth place. I'd say, Phil, he rode, la he rode that like a multi-medalist. <laughs> No, but just to finish it, then Sorry, yeah. to, to put it into context, the line, it's, it, they just keep rolling. The horses can get longer and longer and longer, and it's a lot of the riders are trying to get up on the six, and some of the horses are actually getting there too, too close, um, and, and others are getting there too flat. 
and it's uh, it, it's centimeter centimeter work that uh, very millimeter work that Santiago Varela is very very good at. So Marcus Henning completes the course 11 sef seconds quicker than the time allowed. Yeah, oh, it's pretty impressive. Isn't it? Yeah. But yesterday also he was uh, 75 something. He and Daniel Doyser rode the two fastest rounds. Um, without even making them look fast, and that's actually what what uh, really put the, the Germans into the finals. The fact that uh, they rode such fast rounds. Colombia made it into the top eight as well. This man was the fifth member of the team, Dero Aroyev, with Baccarat Fontaine. This is just an eight-year-old. Yeah, and uh, Dairo, man, he's right. He's getting horses. You know, he hasn't been sitting on these horses too long. The horses are. Um, not so experienced he's here with the team um this horse really he doesn't really let the rider help him he attacks the jumps he's a little bit strong dairo is, is is a very very talented rider and he can really ride any type of horse but he, he himself feeling just a little overfaced going into this class tonight and you can just see this horse is a little bit running away from himself the whole way he's careful he's got enough scope but uh See and gets into trouble, gets out of trouble, and you can see Dairo is is uh, is just doing his best up there to try and set the horse up in front of a jump to, to give him a chance to jump it. But um, to, when your horse is uh, running away and Bakura is just taking on the jumps, and you can see Dairo really tried to to ride nearly too big a distance into the tri triple combination because he felt the Bakura was just going to run past the distance, and uh, you can just see that these these two. Although the horse is careful as quality, he's just a little bit here out of his depth. The rideability is not th not yet there. It's, um, I think Dyer will be happy now that he's through the finish. But yes, the size of the fence is not a problem at all for that well, eight-year-old. Uh, this is this is the thing. But the horse is only eight years old. It's under floodlights. Um, he's he's a little bit over ambitious. He's he's new, relatively new to to Dairo. There's a lot of things coming together um, for what we see on the screen. And uh, you know, in, in three, four months' time, this could look very different. You know, it could all I be. I think it's a lovely horse. Yeah. Two down, eight folds for Dara Ariyev for Colombia, Baccarat Fontaine. Well, that takes us to an arena maintenance break. We've had 22, 50% of the horses expected forward for this, the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. We've had three clears so far. Bar Bless for the Netherlands, followed by fellow countryman Eric van der Vleuten in with another clear, and the third clear, Christian Arman for Germany. Quickest four falter was Marcus Enning with Funky Fred. Top 25% will go forward to the jump off, and we will be back in a few moments' time once the tractors have done their job in the arena. So stay with us for the second half of the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix here at the Rail Club de Polo. We'll be back in about seven or eight minutes' time.
Welcome back to the city of Barcelona, to the Real Club de Polo, where we're carved halfway through the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix. Three clears so far, Bart Bless and Eric van der Vleuten for the Netherlands. Christian Alban for Germany, that's just the clears so far. 25%, so 11 will go through into the jump-off, irrespective of their scores so just the three clears from the first 23 competitors and now for Belgium and what a few months the nation of Belgium have had Jerome Geary with Garfield to teach de Templier Jerome of course on that team yesterday who had the best result taking them into the final as last to go on Sunday in the hot seat. And Garfield, really a great a great friend for Jerome, great successes together. He also takes the inside turn here. Oh, jumps it really to the right. Those of you who weren't with us, um, the best 11 or all clear rounds will go into the jump off. At the moment, three clears, and the rest of the place is being finished with four faults. So the riders, of course, for the time allowed, it's not necessary to go inside. But obviously, if you, at this moment, if you have a fence down, like has happened here to Jerome, it does make sense to have cut the corners a few times to have a chance to get into that jump off. Riding for 150,000 euros today. It's an A ranking class from the world ranking points. It's a prestigious competition to win. And there's a lot of money here on the table. Eight faults into sixth in place goes Jerome Gary and Garfield de Tige de Templier for Belgium into 16th place. 
90 seconds the time allowed. They started at the beginning of this class at 85 seconds. And now it's seeming quite generous, isn't it, Jess? 90 seconds. Yeah, 85 was, was looking really tight, but the, the five second um, difference is really quite big. Um, and it is, it is making, it's making it at, at this stage not so much of a difference to what the riders are doing, because obviously with only three clears at the halfway stage and 11 spots for the jump off, uh, the riders are still taking inside turns to make sure that they have a good time in case in case they have a jump off to have any kind of a chance like Marcus Inning, uh, multi-medal winner with his Frank, Frankie Fred going down in 79 seconds. I mean, he's he's pretty sure, you know, that he, he has a very, very good chance to get into the jump off. He will, of course, take the four faults with him, but still uh, he's a chance to get a, a cut of this good prize money here tonight. Now for France in the team of the Nations Cup. 12 months ago, they finished second here, but this is the Grand Prix. Kevin Stout, Olympic team champion with Viking de la Rosary for France. Gone up two places in the rankings. Coming in to October, 15th in the world rankings now. Has been in the number one spot. The fifth member of the squad for France yesterday for the Longines final and will they bring Kevin forward on Sunday yeah I think there, there is a chance that they will do that um, I'd say you know they're just just watching how today went competition today and um, a little bit the team tactics obviously having Kevin as, as your fifth man is a very strong position to be in and um, both um, Matthew Bio and Oh, Nicholas Delmott, they both had, had oh, Matthew was had only a time fault, but uh, Nicholas Delmott had two down yesterday. So th there is for sure just that little bit of a, perhaps a little bit of a tactical change. And Kevin jumping a great round with this horse has already had some great form recently with this horse. And he clears the last to make it the fourth clear. So Kevin Stout. Olympic gold medalist goes clear on Viking de la Rosarie, so that makes it clear number four. Yeah, and he made that look so simple. Beautiful round here for Kevin and his Viking. Just see the balance that he has through his body. Just letting the horse jump and then just every time gently easing his body back, just balancing the horse for the next jump. Beautiful piece of craftsmanship. Italy. Lorenzo De Luca with Scuderia 1918 Halifax Van Het Clue. Italy in the Longines final in the top eight. One of three countries on Sunday that we're battling it out for the single Olympic qualification ticket here in the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup. Colombia, Ireland and Italy all in the top eight on Sunday, and those three, whoever finishes best out of the trio, will get their Olympic ticket. But tonight, it's about the Grand Prix. Lorenzo De Luca for Italy. Scuderia, 1918, Halifax, Van Het, Clue. Yeah, lovely horse, this uh, Scuderia, 1918, Halifax. Um, of course, Scuderia, 1918, great supporters for the Stefex stables invested into uh, both Daniel's Tobago and to Halifax, supporting Daniel Deusser and Lorenzo De Luca and of course the Stefex stables and Stefan Conter. And great to see this Italian, Italian uh, stables really supporting these riders. And I uh, actually met Lorenzo in the gym today. I think he was there more out of boredom than out of, out of keenness to be at the gym. <laughs> 
But this horse is a horse that is really um, would be one of the favourites to win a class like this. I mean, he can jump every every competition in the world, but he's an extremely careful horse, extremely fast horse. And uh, if Lorenzo gets into the jump off with him tonight, he will be oh. one of those ones to watch. And look at the carefulness of this horse. He's got that typical, typical heartbreaker, keenness and carefulness that his, his father did have and the same ambition to the jump. With the four foals, he stops the clock on 84.47, puts him into ninth place. So, with so many still to come, unlikely to be in the jump off. That was just a tap that put that four faults on the board. A great round for Lorenzo De Luca, but four faults, Lorenzo De Luca's Guderia 1918 Halifax Van Het Clue. Yeah, that's really frustrating yeah. for those two. Really, really frustrating. But again, perhaps getting caught out by the fact that he was looking at the, the colors of the oxer rather than the vertical, because he really did, he didn't just rub it, he really did knock that down. Disappointing for Lorenzo and Halifax. Now for Brazil. Remember the squad in day one of the Nations Cup yesterday, Eduardo Menezes with H5 Quintol. Fourteen-year-old gelding. Another great support at the H5 stables for Eduardo with his Quintal. Great partnership, long partnership together now. These two, and uh, he's had some good results this year. Spent a lot of time in Calgary. Won a good 160 class there in Calgary this year. Quintal. Back end of last year, a little tired, but now he's he's right back up there. And <laughs> really uses his bodies to to balance Quintal there over the vertical, turned inside, just took his time, balanced him, and really really set him up for that. They, of course, didn't have such a good day. He rode Chaganas yesterday with nine faults. And the Brazilians not having a happy day and ending up in the Challenge Cup tomorrow night, not in that final on Sunday. Of course, still a lot a lot to go for tomorrow night, a lot of money to win tomorrow night. And the, those teams who haven't made the final, they will be battling it out. But the, the Brazilians really didn't have a good day yesterday, and they're going to have to really smarten up their act if they're, if they're going to be on the podium tomorrow. Quinto coming down with two fences down to the last jump. And he clears the last, but the two fences down means eight faults for Eduardo Menezes and H5 Quinto for Brazil into 20th place. Four clears so far. Fastest four fault to Marcus Senning, 79.06. The four falters may squeak in to the jump off if we don't get the enough clears to make up the 25%. Which is, it is looking at this at this stage at that... This, that's what I'm thinking, it's, yeah. uh, I think Marcus Enning's on a, on a good situation there and... Um, yeah, Nicholas Delmont, Penny Loop, they're certainly at this moment they're they're sitting very very safe. We still have a few good combinations to go, there's plenty left to go, but whew, it's uh, again really difficult to get clear around this course on Santiago Varela. Now for Italy. Emilio Bicocci with Avita. SGZ. A 
this combination jump. Dublin in the Longines Nations Cup. Jump two rounds, both four faults apiece. Good rounds for him in Dublin. I was just checking to see where he was on the world rankings. He's moved up from just outside the top 100 to 97th place, Emilio. Yeah. And you know, these days when you... I mean, the top 100 was always very difficult to get into. But uh, when you go down through the list and, and look at the names that are in the top 100, top 150, there's every single one of them you'd say, oh, that's one of the top guys. Oh, that's one of the top guys. You know, the sport has is very, very thick of very talented riders and very talented riders with very, very good horses um, that they can actually gather these points to get so high on the rankings. But Emilio, a man, he's really been a stable member of the Italian team now for many years. Great results that he used to have with Sasaskaya Aris, who was then sold on to Ireland. And he's jumping another really good round with this very talented Evita. Another daughter of the great Verdi, Michael Underfloyd. And that is a super clear and very popular. That is clear number five. Emilio Bicocci in to the jump off here with Avita SGZ. Interesting to see, like Chaco Blue, Verdi bringing an awful lot of very, very good horses. And a lot of, a lot of his horses in the top sport are mares. It's quite interesting to see. Well, the last running of the Grand Prix for the City of Barcelona, the high end Cup of the City of Barcelona, was back in 2017. There wasn't a running of this competition last year. And this man, with Claire Z, took the top spot two years ago. For Belgium, Peter Devos, this time riding Jade Van Bishop. And like he produced Claire to the top sport in the process of bringing Jade van der Bischoff into the top sport as well. This mare has been very obvious this year how talented she is. Jumped many good rounds, has already done some of the really big stuff and continuously consistent, continuously learning. Definitely a young lady here for the future. And he was on the team with Jade yesterday and um, the Belgians will be now. That's why she's going here tonight, the Grand Prix, the Belgians will be taking him out and bringing in his teammate and friend Niels Brownsels. Niels coming in with Jensen. And, uh, uh, actually, we talked about it winning the Grand Prix two years ago with Claire Zed. Of course, he was on the European winning gold medal team just a few weeks ago with Claire Zed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he really has, has uh, as a rider and as a manager, matured over the years, has his really manages his horse as well, has got great success. The second to Ben Mayer in the title of Rider of the Year in the GCL last week. And um, he's really riding at the top of his sport at this moment. And I think a good decision from, certainly a horsemanship decision from Chef to keep Peter Weinberg just together, would have made this together with, with um, Peter just to take Jade out and let her jump individually this evening, get some more experience, and let Niels come in with also the relatively inexperienced and horse for the future, Jensen. Again, a, a team that's just testing a little bit for next year now at this the late stage of the year, just which horses they have for the team. This is a very good round from the world, number seven. He pops over the last. Plenty of time on the clock, and that makes it clear, number six. Peter Davos for Belgium, Jade Van Bishop, go clear. Well, I can tell you, it's starting to hot up now, Phil. 
Yeah, that little that little spin of the tractor around the ring didn't do any harm. It's trampolined everything a little bit. <laughs> three, We're getting a few clears. Three clears in the last five competitors. Yeah. Coming thick and fast. Yeah, the paint is dry and we don't have to watch it anymore. Great ride there from Peter and Jade. Lovely move. That's the six clears. Kevin Stout, Peter Devos, Bart Bless, Eric van der Vloyt, Emilia Bicocci, Christian Alman. Now for Sweden. Stephanie Holman. With flips, Little Sparrow. Stephanie Holman took over the ride a couple of years ago. From Peter Fredriksson, based with the Fredricksons. Yeah, winners, World Cup winners, this combination. And uh, for those who don't know, already know, Flip's Little Sparrow, daughter of great butterfly Flip. And um, Stephanie is, is, is the reserve rider for the Swedish team this weekend. And um, just looks like she's going to stay the reserve rider, staying to the, with the team. I did a good job yesterday on Gawil as one of the favourites into Sunday for the final. He's choosing to go around there, just giving Flip's little sparrow just a chance to get straight for that very tall 155 vertigo. Stefan does a really great job as stable jockey for the Fredrickson family. They're gravel under stable. Beautifully ridden through there. Now beautifully jumped. Lovely to watch. Nice to see the combination bit that you use for some sensitive horses. Oh, watch this back bar. Gets there. The combination of a rubber bit in the horse's mouth and the rubber over the horse's nose. Just very nice for some sensitive horses. They can just lie on it a bit and the rider still has a good connection. What a sweep around. This is looking just the last to go for Stephanie Holman. Stephanie Holman has gone clear. That is clear number seven that's the first clear for sweden here in the grand prix super round and uh, nice to see she's absolutely delighted with that looking up into the vip they were a little bit more interested in their on their ham on, on there their chateau de yeah chateau whatever. De whatever their ham on as uh, us down here enjoying the great sport with stephanie holman and flips little sparrow well that's three consecutive clears yeah seven in total at the moment. Well, I could tell you. Our multi-medal winner and the French, they're going to be starting to get a little bit warm under the collar at this stage as these clear irons are coming. Like we said before, only 11 or all clear irons will go into the jump. -off. We've had one clear for Belgium and Peter Devos, former winner of the Grand Prix here in Barcelona. Now we move to a teammate who jumped a super clear in the Nations Cup first day yesterday. Gregory Wathele with Picabello full house to Linden. Yeah, Gregory has been showing his extreme talent, jumping one clear round after another for the Belgium team, coming in as anchor man and really making it look like a little walk in the park. Very important member of the Belgium team and this another horse this nine-year-old forever Tarko Terlinden that we have seen with one of the Philip Hearts twins I think Nicola and uh, the father of this horse and Gregory bring him up nice and steady he was jumping him in Bonhaiden in Belgium two star recently just letting him pop around quietly jumping clear every day taking it easy and just producing this horse nicely. And again here you can see him just taking his time in the turns, using the inside turn to save the time, but not bustling the horse 
again turning inside just sitting very calm riding the perfect distance great to watch Gregory Waterlet he's very very precise in his riding and very calm in his riding he's a big man but he has great control of his body and does a lovely lovely job of keeping the horses as natural as possible through the course yet trying to, to help them and you could just see that coming in the last the last stride he just slipped over to the right and didn't have the weight on both hind legs and there again young horse mistake oh and you could really see it there two times just ducking down really not measuring that combination at all and Gregory straight away deciding to retire obviously a reason for that he just felt that the horses had two heavy mistakes now in the combination and obviously that's not something that he, he wants this horse to have and he, before he just continues that big ox who just said oh we just call it an a now so a retirement for belgium for gregory Wathley and pigabella full house to linden just see there he on the last stride he just ducked across to the right and there he jumps and you can see here the horse stays small and doesn't even get up to jump the vertical it gets a very heavy mistake and like martin fuchs before with chica chica with the heavy mistake straight away the riders just feeling that it is for the horse's confidence better just take him home it doesn't matter take him home and regroup tomorrow there's a class not in floodlights and small and just regroup part of part of the procedure of uh, bringing the horse to the top level Now we go to Egypt. 50th in the world rankings. One of the backbones of the Egyptian international teams over the last few years. Abdul Saeed for Egypt with Arpej Daru. Nine year old. French bread mare. Yeah, Abdelli really likes this one. He bought it from Marlon Zaratelli. And uh, yeah, originally he sort of had the feeling it was going to be a nice, a nice sort of 145 horse, and he just goes from strength to strength. This would be the first really biggie for this horse, also. But Abdel very confident in the ability of this horse, and not worried to go in and try it. Of course, the Egyptians do have half of their string of horses already out in Morocco, ready for their qualification competition for their group. Olympic Games yeah now. for the Olympic Games so they are here and un slightly underpowered with horsepower but as, as we said yesterday it's already fantastic that they're able to field a team here and and go to Rabat exactly yeah. you know showing showing how much the Egyptian sport has moved on and Abdel this says is a really there's a great group of people um, now in Egypt uh, coming he goes very wide there great group of people coming together in the sport in Egypt and they're all looking you know, how can we build our team how can we become stronger together and it's uh, great to see so this is a big test now here for this young horse abdel comes in the fords really helping really trusting the carefulness of this lovely horse just giving a great ride and this horse answering the question so easily abdel absolutely right when he said he has a lot of belief in this lovely animal Super round, he won't make the jump off it today, but he certainly will do in the future, that's for sure. So, for Egypt, Abdul Sayed, Apej Duru, into 16th place with that four faults in 86.86. Yeah, just, he came in quick and uh, just caught it off with the hind legs. Difficult to see that on the picture the first time, but definitely a horse for the future. And you know, Phil, why we're at it today, you know that today is World Animal Day. World Animal Day, is it? It's World Animal Day. Very appropriate as the world number one in the sport of jumping comes into the arena here in Barcelona. Steve Gerdat with Victorio de Flotard. One of the 11 clear rounds from the 72 competitors, the 71 competitors that took part yesterday in day one of the Longines 
FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. I decided to look up a little bit, few stats on Steve earlier. Did you? In the last 10 years, Steve got out the world number one and he's been at the top of the world for several months now, has competed in 3,140 classes, rank, rankings classes. He's won 156 of them, which is 5%, on, and he's used 68 horses. 3,140 classes over 10 years, 156 wins with 68 horses. It's quite impressive, isn't it? It's impressive. It's quite interesting also. And this, he's not going to win this one tonight, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no. All joking aside, he must be really annoyed. Talk about that, really, yeah. really annoyed with that mistaken number one. Um, this this horse, he's he's, uh, he's been going well recently. But okay, he's a relatively new horse also to Steve. You need to go with over the ride. In April, this horse was produced by Raphael Gerdes in France, and it's just the partnership being formed now with Steve. But still to come into a Grand Prix here and wall about number one is not what any rider wants. Beautifully managed there. Steve has a great way of just naturally riding in horses through the course, and just supporting their weaknesses and letting them use their strengths. And of course now at this stage, he's starting to bustle up a little bit. He, he wants to try and grab one of those spots, but he just, just wasn't there coming to the triple. He was trying to make it and he was just getting dragged in, just wasn't there. Just chasing, chasing a bus that was driving away. Former Olympic champion gets the 12 volts, so won't be in the jump off tonight, as you say. But the clear yesterday, helping Switzerland get into that top eight, was a valuable part of the team as they head towards Sunday to the final of the Nations Cup. Steve Gerrard, 12 penalties with Victorio de Flotard. Oh. Yeah. Just getting dragged in a little bit there. Now for Portugal, it's been a week, already a week of mixed fortunes for the Portuguese. So best wishes for this man, Rodrigo Guestira Almeida with Kafka van Heffink. Nine-year-old Belgium stallion. Yeah, Rodrigo not having the round he was, he was really looking for yesterday and just changing his tack slightly, slightly today. Just made one or two adjustments compared to yesterday. It was an untypical round for this pair. This horse normally really very much on the ball. He may be still inexperienced, but has jumped a lot of great rounds and went down, went round with three down yesterday, and that was really not. But Rodrigo, a guy who's really watching his sport and doing and, and could see what was wrong and just made those adjustments now for today. Obviously, jumping this horse in the Grand Prix today because Portugal having just a really unfortunate week with their other Rodrigo getting injured the first day. And we send our best wishes to him and a speedy recovery. And uh, then yesterday, him not having a good round. And yeah, it all went. It all went a little bit down the drain. Luciano, of course, jumping a fantastic round with the beautiful Fitty fit for fun, but. You can't win a team class with one horse. And this run much better than yesterday. This horse jumping now back to usual form. Rodrigo giving him a good ride here. He's got two jumps between him and the jump off. He has to keep it together now to the last jump. Great turn of fortune for the Portuguese. What a super round. 
I think Rodrigo was sort of wondering, well, what was the time? Am I all right? <laughs> How did he land today for the last? Absolutely super clear. And that makes it clear number eight. Clear for Portugal. Rodrigo Guiestira Almeida and Kafka van Heffink. Yeah, and congratulations to the owners who are also here. Hubert is enjoying seeing his jump here, his horse jump here in Barcelona. We have 10 left in the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix this weekend here at the weekend of the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. 10 left, we have eight clears on the board in Kevin Stout, Peter Devos, Bart Bless, Eric van der Vleuten, Emilio Bicocci, Christian Almond, Almeida Rodrigo Giestera, Stephanie Holman. And Henry van Hegemann coming in with Fancy Me. Horse that he and his girlfriend, Janneke Sprunger, have produced together. Henrik van Eckewin. Did you see Henrik going right, right up to the VIP tent, turning around, getting a good run down to number one. A guy that really, he really learned his trade at the Ludger Beerbaum stables. Riding all the young horses many years ago and learning to ride every type of horse and it's really stood to him now in good stead. That was a to turn. Yeah, well, he's had the one one down early yeah. now, and he's, he's chasing only, that time. He's only got one plan now, and that is to get home, leave the jumps up, and get home as quick as possible. That prize money, he wants to take a little bit of that back home. Come Quickest to Germany. full falter at the moment, 79.06. Marcus Enning for Germany. He's really and really chasing that 79 <laughs> seconds, <Yeah. laughs> that's for sure. He just has to keep the balance. There's a difficult combination to jump in a hurry. Yeah. It is all done and dusted, Phil. Difficult course. I mean, it's a, it's a course to ride inside the time alive, but it's difficult, of course, from Santiago Varela like this to really change your rhythm and try and, try and uh, get a faster time. I mean, Marcus Inning, he really, from start to finish, and he's anyway very good at riding fast, but he was very smooth from start to finish with Frankie Fred to ride so fast. Three fences down, four faults for Elric van Eckerman for Sweden with Fancy Me. To jump, eight clears. So Olivier Philippard's coming into the ring with Hurricane. Um, what a fabulous clear round, Olivier Philippard's jumped yesterday to help Belgium go into the top eight and come out actually on top, the defending champions of the Nations Cup final. But here riding Hurricane, as you say, Jess, Olivier Philippartz with the 12-year-old gelding Hurricane, just moved up five places in the rankings overnight, 26th in the world. Yeah, and again, a relatively new co combination to go with the ride in April. This horse produced also for Ruben and Costa. We're keeping you up. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadful, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is getting quite late here. Yeah, there'll be no beauty sleep for us or for anybody else tonight. But you don't need it, James. Who needs it here, Phil, in this beautiful Spanish evening? Oof, 
came inside, tried to set him up, but this horse really spooking under the lights. And he turns inside, but I think it's going to be difficult for him to just keep this horse relaxed and also get around here in a fast time for this four falls to try and make that jump off. of bringing him around now getting a little bit of experience you can really see this horse just struggling a little bit with this floodlights in here this evening new experience for him all of his twin brother nicola of course at the moment works very hard and getting himself fit after injuring his shoulder and being operated. Spending a lot of time in the rehabilitations, training, working hard. And he can come back for the indoor season. And one of us deciding just to call it a day here. You can just see Hurricane really spooky with the shadows, a little bit like Trix tracks earlier. Just finding that dark corner. You can see that corner. The floodlights are very good, but that one corner there, it is very shadowy and uh, it can be quite imposing for the horses. So Olivia Philippas and the Hurricane for Belgium, they retire. For Ireland, Peter Maloney with Sassi Say Ares. Yeah, Peter just coming up. Give this horse a look at the triple combination, but this is a very, very experienced horse. Very successful horse with Emilio Bacocchi. Great results, and then sold to Princess Haya for this very talented young man to ride and uh, was really out of the sport for a while and is just coming back now and coming back really well starting to bond starting to form a great relationship the fourth recently in the Grand Prix of Paderborn and uh, really interesting to see how this partnership come around this course today because this is really a, a horse that could jump this course easily and uh, this young man really proving to be one of the best riders that Ireland has produced now in many years. Really already belong to the top group of Irish riders. Very talented. Just see, trying to make those two strides it just all happen too quick. Getting caught in that vertigo. Aris, very ambitious horse, just got galloping through the turns. And Peter just has to keep him contained. Just dragging him into the triple combination a little bit. Great talent to jump back for that oxer. Seventy nine point zero six is the quickest four falter we've got. There. He lands it eighty four point four three, puts him into thirteenth place, so just out of the jump of for Peter Maloney. So four faults for Peter Maloney, Sassise Ares for Ireland. Into thirteenth place. jumped in good there and you could just see Peter really trying to contain him on those two strides but Aris was just running a little bit bold at that vertical and just got caught out mm. 
Six left to jump in the Grand Prix in the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. For Japan, Takashi has Shibayama with Chanyon. Yeah, Takashi Haza is uh, certainly for those who've seen the German scene as, a, as an Alta Haza in the sport there. He's uh, really well known and has come up now to join the group of Japanese riders training with Paul Shakamoto towards the Olympics. They are qualified. Japanese Federation really taking it seriously and putting together a great team of horses and riders to go to their championships. They put up a good show yesterday. They didn't make it into the final, but they're going into the, certainly going into the Challenge Cup on paper as one of the favorites after the performance yesterday. And uh, Takashi was their number five. He didn't jump on the team yesterday. He's relatively new to the group with this horse. And uh, just getting the chance to jump here tonight to just see how these two are bonding together. They've already been on the team in Giestren. You just see, think, just the horse thinking a little bit too much there behind. It gets caught out in front a few times. Looks like Takashi's thinking about going home. I was just thinking the same, yes. Now just decides to call the day, obviously feeling that the horse is not comfortable under the lights here this evening and we have the Queen's Cup tomorrow. There is another chance for them to go into a good competition and obviously if the rider, like a few before, is not feeling comfortable, it's better just to call it a day. Takashi has Shibuyama. Chanyon, they retire. They did a great performance yesterday. They didn't make the top eight, but the one moment it was looking as if they were going to, didn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, they certainly went very close. And uh, coming here, they had really, you know, they just wanted to measure themselves with the world's best to see where they are. It's still a year to the Olympics. They still have a lot of work to do, and they decided it was time to just come and measure themselves. And uh, I think they're, they're certainly, after the performance yesterday, they're going very positively. Uh, seeing what they can work on, but certainly seeing that they, it's not an unrealistic goal for them to go as a team to the Olympics. And this man has already been to the Olympic Games for Norway. Stein Andersen, Kantala and Jess. Stein Andersen, born on the 4th of October, 1959. 60, 60 today. today. Yep, it's his birthday. This is his good friend Jimmy told me that early, Jimmy Gullickson. And uh, he's also the, uh, come in as reserve for the team here. And uh, one of the few that get to join the Gullickson family on the Norwegian team. And uh, Stein really so much under his belt. Um, guy that's jumped on the team for so many years for Norway been very successfully international and I have to say you know with 60 years old to jump at this level it's it's really a great achievement and he was second at the national championships to Jimmy Gullickson uh, this year and um, still as motivated as ever that early fence time he has a really tall job ahead of him to try to leave the poles up and get under that magic 80 seconds mark to put him in a situation to maybe get into the, the jump off. We have eight clear rounds, 11 or all clears will go into the jump off. So there is three four falters with a chance, sorry, four, four, three four falters with a chance at this moment. And 11th place at this moment is Penelope Leprevo on a time of 82.32 with four faults. I'm not saying that it's impossible to get Penny Lopes time, but she was not hanging around. Took a couple of inside turns. She was already finished at this stage and Stein still coming to the last jump. 
Oh, the super round, four faults. Just inside that, 90 seconds time allowed. Stein Andersen, happy birthday to you and a great round from the nine-year-old Cantelaar. Four faults for Stein Andersen and Cantelaar for Norway. Into 22nd place. He can go and celebrate his birthday now. Yeah, he better hurry up or it'll all be over. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, he's got about, <laughs> he hasn't got about 50 minutes. He hasn't got a whole lot of time to celebrate. By the time he's trotted his horse off and taken, we could leave his boots on, of course. <laughs> he will end this evening. Although there is there is a little bar right beside the practice room. Yeah, so you can, have a, you can have a little Estrella Cerveza before he, before he <laughs> is in, in to, birthday is over. Well, from one from Olympian to another. Aiken Sato for Japan. Safir Delac. Aiken jumped on the team yesterday with this lovely Safir Delac, previously ridden by Christian Romboots for Austria, and uh, had a foot in the water yesterday. And. Uh, his trainer told me today that was that was a mistake of the trainer. Of the trainer? Absolutely, Jeez, trainer's said. mistake. So there you go. And uh, Eichen and this horse have already formed a great partnership, winning the Grand Prix of Arnhem. Top double clear in Egistra. And Eichen is really a very, very good jockey. Been away from the sport now for quite a few years. Used to jump for the Stefex stables. He's just really come back, literally come back where he's left off. He's been riding now, he's fit again. He's, it's great to see him riding. He's really a lovely jockey, great balance. And with the right horse, he really is a rider who would have a chance for an individual medal at the Olympics, never mind a team medal. But if, he's, if he could be sitting on a superstar horse, he really could, um, he could really do something very special for his country at the Olympics next and, year. And you just think how long he's been riding for Japan. You know, he was at the Olympic Games back in 2008. And at that time, there wasn't the overall support for the Japanese riders. He's done a fantastic job, hasn't he? Oh, it's abs absolutely. He must be a hero in the, in the world of jumping in, in Japan. Well, you never know. I mean, I, I haven't been over there enough to know, but um, the problem is it when you go to, to the Asian countries, they're not really in the sport yet. It's getting better. And obviously this will help, but they're not really in the sport like we are here. Um, when we go to the show in Shanghai, um, you know, they clap at every jump that the horse jumps and they get, <laughs> they get very excited. And it's uh, it reminds of other countries in the early days. I can just slipping inside there, trying to get underneath that 82, but he's always just ahead of Penny Low, getting into that 11th place, Phil. I can set uh, Safir Delac for Japan in to 11th place will that be enough to get in to the jump off here in the grand prix in the hyundai cup of the city of barcelona you can just see his training core looking very very disappointed there on the kiss and cry i mean just caught out on this jump just like many others they just come rolling down there on the six and just get dragged into that front bar What a fantastic round this lady produced yesterday to change the fortunes for Portugal in front of the crowds here in Barcelona. Luciana Denis, Fatigo do Desert. Yeah, absolutely. It was a really, it was a difficult, it's been a really difficult week for the Portuguese here. And uh, it was a difficult situation for Luciana because everything had fallen out of bed. You know, the team was eliminated really before she even went in. And... Uh, She's here with, with her two best horses and fit for fun. Uh, certainly needs no introduction. And it was it was really lovely to see the gesture for the sport. How Luciana came in yesterday, jumped that beautiful clear round with fit for fun. 
yes, of course, she has a chance of the pot of gold for jumping um, double clear. If she does tomorrow in the challenge, there's 50,000 to be divided between all those who jump double clear over the two days. She does have a chance of that. And now she, she's realizing that basically with the team not qualifying for the Olympics, uh, the only thing that they can do is to try for the individual spots. And Luciana will be one of those riders who, for sure, for the rest of the season, will be chasing a little bit those competitions with the high points, certainly with this horse, to um, try and get that individual spot to qualify to go to the Olympics. You can just re really see her fighting here today. Um, that six short strides to the plank, she really supporting this horse been doing a fantastic job for her all year still relatively inexperienced at this level but how this horse has really stepped up this year to do such great things with Luciana and she is looking like a clear round it's written all over her coming to the last jump Phil that is a superb round look at that what a what a super super couple of rounds from Luciana Denise. Yesterday she was clear in the Nations Cup. Now she's clear tonight in the Grand Prix. That was absolutely fantastic. Luciana Denise clear with Vertigo de Desert. So Marcus Enning in 10th on 79.06. That's the quickest for Falter. Yep, he's guaranteed a spot now. As our last rider comes into the ring, Marcus Enning sitting in 10th place. We were thinking before that he might just sneak it in. My God, Phil, we're unbelievable how we managed to think that Marcus Enning might just make it. And Nicholas Delmott, he's sitting in 11th place, four faults, 81.83. So be it Mandley, if he wants to be in that jump off, he has to go clear or he has to jump with one down in 81.82 or better. Didn't or Italy. It's not, it's a bit, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, I think Paolo... Paolo, uh, Paolo Pena hasn't... ...hasn't turned out for the Grand Prix, so we're down to the last man. Bia Mandley for Switzerland. Vic de Sarissier. Yeah, be it lovely to see him back on the Swiss team. Been a great member for the Swiss team. Now living in America, training Katie Dillon. Didn't have the best day on the team yesterday, but uh, sometimes you need more than one chance when you've been, been out for a while. And this horse that he's riding shares a little bit the ride together with Katie. Both both have been riding this horse, and uh, Katie's been riding it now the last while, and, and Beat's taken it back now in San Tropez and jumped some good rounds already there together. But you can just see jumping that little bit green here under the lights, Beat doing a good job up to there, keeping it together. But just falling out. Very talented horse. Very careful. Just see everything still happening a little bit quick. Be it really. And he's close to that. He's not going to make it. He's just going to be outside. Took the inside turn to try and get into the jump off. In the 17th, doesn't make it. But so. Beat Mandy finishes with the four faults in 17th place. And that means that we have got a jump off with nine clears and two with four faults in Marcus Enning with Funky Fred for Germany and Nicolas Delmont for France. And of course, the four faults will carry forward.
Well, there will be an arena maintenance before we go into the jump off, and this is just confirming. So the jump off of the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix here at the Real Club de Polo. Kevin Stout, Peter Devos, Bart Bless, Eric van der Vleuten, Emilio Bicocci, Christian Alman, Luciana Denise, Rodrigo Giestra Almeida, Stephanie Holman, Marcus Enning on four faults and Nicholas Delmont on four faults. They will be in the jump off and the story will have a quick break, but the story has to be the change of fortunes for Portugal. How fantastic to see two clears for Portugal in the jump off in the Grand Prix after what was been a very difficult day for them yesterday. Yeah, it is absolutely. And sometimes the, the, the bubble has to has to, to burst for things to, to settle down and they've had they've had a difficult time, but certainly their two uh, best riders at this moment, two most successful riders at the moment really um, coming in and doing doing such a great job. Well, we'll have a quick break whilst they prepare the course for the jump off of the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. We'll be back in just a few moments' time for the culmination of this 150,000 euro class here in Barcelona. Bear with us about five or six minutes' time.
Well, the first one of our jump off coming into the arena. And Nicholas Delmont will start us off. Of course, going in reverse order for the second round. And uh, there we see 10 obstacle time allowed of 60 seconds in this jump off. And we'll be able to run through when Nicholas is jumping. A couple of interesting options in the jump off. Going to be interesting to see already between number one and number two. There is an inside line through the combination. Whether the riders will do it or not, it will save them about one stride. He's setting off to number one. Has it down already? Has now eight faults, of course, carrying that four faults from the first round. And spinning back here. is quite a long and flat jump off course that Santi has set here today. Coming down to the combination, 11, B and C, and then they will run down to the old number five around the open water jump and down to that tall vertical, one meter 55, number five. Nicolas Delmar and Alain Deben complete on 12 penalties, as you say, Jess, bringing forward the four from his first round, 57.97 the time. 57.97, 12 faults. Nicolas Delmotte for France with Alain Deben. Two full falters. to the into the second round and this the second of those four falters for Germany Mark Cassani with Funky Fred and he will start at the top of the arena that white jump that we can see it's a new jump number 15 and then he will either go through the middle of B and C of the triple combination or around C to number 16 continues to the old number four, number two, number eight, number nine, number 10, 11, B and C, and down to the old number five. So 10 efforts in the jump, a long jump, of course. He's made the decision to start from the right to number one. Nicholas starting from the left, jumps number right, right over on the left, and he wants to go down through the double. He's taken the option down through the double. Definitely a faster, more direct option. Down to the old number four. Spins back around the flowers up to what was number two. Galloping up then to the top of the arena. Number eight, that jump that caused so much trouble in the first round. There is a five strides now. The plank has been changed and the pole put on top. Mark's doing that really well, putting a bending six in there, beautifully ridden. Very tight around the flowers to the old number 10. And now he's on the gallop for home. B and C of the triple combination. 11 B, 11 C. And then it's that long run down to number five. One meter 55 high. And Phil, he is clear. He carries forward the four, but that man goes into the lead. He keeps the four faults, but he stopped the clock in 54.20. With four faults, Marcus Senning for Germany into the lead. Now we have the nine with clear rounds from the first round, but Marcus Senning 
has done everything he could do with that four faults, Jess. Yeah, absolutely. And he's really set it up to them with that the jump off like this. It's a very long jump off and it's a real galloping track. He already took straight away the first option through the triple combination. Beautifully done by Marcus Enning. Yes, he's carrying that four faults, but he is putting it up to the other riders. There's a lot of chance out there when you put that speed up that Marcus has just had to have a fence down. So I think that he is possibly going to move well up in the rankings here this evening. Prize fund of 150,000 euros for the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. Now we've got Stephanie Holman for Sweden with Flips Little Sparrow. One of the nine clears now coming forward for the second round of this Grand Prix here in Barcelona. Yeah, interesting to see now what Stephanie's going to do. She just rides that line that Marcus has just ridden. Some riders, they, they walk the jump off course when they're walking the course at the beginning, and some don't. And this was tonight for me a, a really a situation where the rider has an advantage when they take a look at what the jump off course is. Because I looked at that when I was out walking and then I went back and I said, oh, I think there's a line down there through the combination. And it really is there. You just have to set yourself up good to number one, but it, it really is there. Stephanie doing just that jumping right across number one, slipping through the combination, beautifully done. She came from the other side as Marcus. Marcus find it easier for Fred to jump like that. And, uh, cool. You see how Flip's Little Sparrow just looking at the shadows down the corner. But this is naturally a very fast horse. Stephanie just has to make sure that although she keeps galloping forwards, that she just uses her body to keep this horse on its feet. The five is there. She's got it, and it stayed up. This is this is a good ride. This is a really good ride. She's not going to be too far away from Marcus. I don't know if she's going to catch him, but she's not going to be too far she's away. Got a fence in hand, though. Come on, Stephanie. This is a superb round, and that is an absolutely brilliant performance from Stebby Holman and Flips Little Sparrow 53.81 and they remain clear in to the lead for Sweden. Stephanie Holman, Flips Little Sparrow into the lead 53.81 seconds. Jess, that was very, very quick. Yeah, you have a second faster than Marcus Inning and that's that says something, that's really put it up to the others. It was a great run from Stephanie. She kept galloping, used Flips, uh, really powerful stride yet at the same time was balancing keeping the horse on its feet a very very well ridden round by this very talented swedish lady great for portugal to have two in the jump off in the grand prix here tonight the first of that pair rodrigo gestira almeida with kafka van heffing And just see Rodrigo also riding that line from one to two as he knows that if you want to be playing some kind of part in the top places here today it is compulsory or more or less compulsory to take this turn where you can save a stride in a jump off like this really does make the difference Stephanie Holman throwing the gauntlet down 53.81 seconds and it looked very very fast there's no question with that. Oh, and you could just see, yeah, because he jumped right on the angle. You can't see how much of an angle they have to take to number one. When they come from the left, they do have to jump one, number one very much on the angle. Marcus Enning quite cleverly coming from the right, but it doesn't suit every horse. Well, Rodrigo is really determined today. You can just see that he really wants, he really, really wants to win this class. That's the one fence down. And that's the difference, you know, he, Stephanie's horse, a real blood horse, and it just keeps galloping to the jump, and you just have to sit and hold against them, and the hind legs keep getting pushed underneath with every stride. And Rodrigo just having to push this horse a little bit. And when you push, it's quite difficult to keep the balance on the hind legs. 
A very quick time indeed, but that fun fence down, but 53.76 with four faults for Rodrigo Giesto Almeida for Portugal with Kafka van Heffink. Yeah, very good try from him and a long way from the, the unfortunate form that they had yesterday. He's really got the right tack back on again and uh, desperately, desperately trying to be super fast. But it's such a long run up from number two to the old number eight. And he paid the penalty on the turn on that front bar. And we stay with Portugal, leading Portuguese rider in the world. Luciano Denise with the Fatigo do Desert. And what a superb clear. She jumped with fit for fun yesterday in the Nations Cup. And of course, like all those riders who are trying within the one year period to get 15 ranking results out of their top 30 to come into contention for the individual qualification obviously there is there is a ranking list of individuals who can qualify for the olympics when their country is not qualified it's quite complicated but they're gathering points from the 1st of january this year to the 31st of december this year and will that be one place per country one uh, slot? no it's two it's per group it's either one or two slot depending on the coefficient. On the group. Yeah, right. and in her group, there's there's two slots, and um, at this at this moment, if the Irish don't qualify, it's it's uh, the Irish who are right there. The Italians are also very strong. Um, yeah, it's quite difficult. And, um, of course, split into different groups. And, uh, Lucy yeah. on the trying and trying desperately in her group to use this horse. She's already got around 700 points. But it means that they're just at the back end of the year now. She has to keep scoring in a class like this. You know, she needs to be sort of like top four to get those points that she needs. Flies the last, but has that fence down. So four faults. 54.85 into fourth place goes Luciana Diniz with Vertigo du Desert for Portugal. Four of the 11 gone in this, the second round of the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. Stephanie Holman with Flip's Little Sparrow. Still the leaders on 53.81. For Germany, Christian Almond riding Take a Chance on Me. Thank you, Bread, 10 year old stallion. I'm just looking at the list of riders still to come, and all of them, every one of them is capable of getting a very quick round down here. Christian Almond, Bar Players, Eric van der Vleuten, Kevin Stan, Emilia Bicocci, last year's winner, Peter de Vos. Yeah, it's a great spectacle for all the Spanish who've come out and everybody else. There's a lot of a lot of people from other countries, a lot of horse owners have come to follow their horses here. And it's, it's just great. You can see the place is packed. The people are having a wonderful time. We're having super weather. I hope it's going to last the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, this jump off could be anybody's. balance a little bit could take a chance on me a horse that he likes to add strides with and of course a jump off like this he has to really open him up and trust him to jump and just whether he can do that and beat Stephanie's time we have to see oh, a beautiful jump over that the quality of this oh he got away with that one sounded great yeah loud. Both Christian and take a chance of me really trying here. It's going to be very close. 53.81, that's the time we've got to beat. He's very it's close. It's going to be very, very close indeed. Will he make it? He makes it. He goes into the lead. The former world number one, World Cup winner, Christian Armand. Take a chance on me, Zed. Go into the lead at 52.98.
And I can tell you, he certainly did take a chance. It was, it was everything but not the perfect jump off. And uh, Christian just using his 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 yeah his experience and to just keep trying to rebalance every every jump and take a chance on me really really jumping fantastically this evening. Now to Italy, Emilio Bigocci, Avita SG also Zanga's Ida bread. 52.98. That's the time to beat. Yeah, this lovely daughter of Verdi. And Evita jumped a very, very good first round, looking really sharp and uh, a lovely blood mare. Yeah, so she's naturally quite quick. I would she? imagine if he lets her off, she'll be able to cover the ground. Just, It's just the problem that they have, uh, that they have to be able to just keep the keep the balance this is a big arena it's a hundred meters long i think the arena and you know the santiago varela's parkour course is just using the entire arena and the horses they really really have to gallop now to, to chase this time of christian he certainly set off at a good pace i can tell you Oh, he's got a set up, setting off as an Irish man behind him. Really goes wide there to try and get straight. Wants the five here. Gets it up the hind legs. He's there or thereabouts. Can he bring it home? 52.98, that's what it's chasing. He's there or thereabouts. He has to just get a slow jump in here. Gets it. Jumps out. Now he's on. He's on. The, he can get him. Phil, it's going to be close. It's going to be very close indeed. What's he going to start? Ah. It's going to start. 52.33 into the lead. <laughs> Italy go into the lead. This is what the crowds want here in Barcelona. That was an absolutely superb round. 52.33. Emilio Bicocci for Italy into the lead with Avita SGZ. Well, I tell you, he just used the quality and the gallop that of was, this that was lovely man. It was fantastic, and he he really used her strengths and tried to support her, and she jumped fantastic. And, and you know, she finished two times over those two verticals. He came flying at them, and although she was very fast in front, she was still able to finish behind. Fantastic from horse and rider. Can this be caught? Two riders from Holland in the second round this is the first of those two eric van der bloyten for the netherlands riding wujkind 19. of course eric very motivated here on spanish soul soil marta ortega owner of this lovely wujkind here with friends and family wujkind is normally not the fastest when I would compare Wunschkin now to, to the likes of Evita or the Flips Little Sparrow. But uh, I know the man can be fast, but let's see. Playing between the jumps. No time for games. No, there's no time for games. And Eric just really trying to take the shortest line possible, trying to sh save strides. He knows that he doesn't have the fastest horse, but he's got to try and save those strides. Up the inside line again. Come on, Wunschkind. Spain is jumping with you. Good turn. Now the double. I think he's, he's fighting a losing battle here. It's topped at 50. Oh, the last has gone. 52.6 would have put him into second place. But the one, the last down puts him into fourth with 52.6 the time with four faults for Eric van der Vleuten and Wunschkind 19. 
Yeah, fantastic try from Eric. A real masterclass of riding the shortest line possible with not the fastest horse in the class. And then, of course, you know, when you've been doing and making the whole way, it's difficult to keep the jump to that last jump. We stay with the Netherlands. Bart Bless with the 13-year-old Belgian bred gelding, Jin D. Emilia Bicocci, 52.33. The current leader, three left to jump. I do trust this man that he can ride faster. And then another one riding that line between one and two. Everybody really, really feeling the need to ride the line between one and two. But it's the angle to number one, which is the most important, actually the most difficult. You know, the horses are coming in. They've gone up to the top end of the ring. And then you ride to number one that you normally take very straight and very carefully. And now they're, they're riding at it at a sli slicing angle. And uh, there needs to be great trust between horse and rider to come and do this. Just see, he didn't put as much angle on number one and had to just manage himself on the flower arrangement there as he was coming through, but no problem. Got the difficult bit out of the way now, he has to gallop. It's a wonderful feeling when you have a jump off like this and you have a beautiful blood horse who you can really ride at the jump and the horse himself backs off as he's coming to the jump and puts his own body weight behind. When you can really ride like that and attack the jumps. It's, it's such fun in an arena like this. This jump off has really been set up to give the crowds here this evening a great spectacle. Oh, he really attacked that. It was never going to work the whole way. He came around the corner. It was just never there. Into eighth place goes Park Bless with Jin D for the Netherlands. 55.05 with the one fence down. Four faults, 55.05 for Bart Bless, Jindy, the Netherlands. Two to go. Well, have we seen the winner? Or can one of these two? Well, we've got Kevin Stout and Peter Devils. And the first of those two, the man that won this trophy 12 months ago. Jess, it's 10 years ago tonight that you were victorious in this Grand Prix. Does this bring back memories? It does, actually. It was the beautiful, the beautiful Cosma and how she won it in style. But again, a course like this, she was a horse that suited this arena. She was so careful, and you could just gallop and jump. Peter Debost, Jade Van Bishop for Belgium. I think I said one last year, one in 2017. There wasn't the Grand Prix last year. So the last running of the City of Barcelona Grand Prix, the Hyundai City of Barcelona Cup, won by this man with Claire Z. Can he repeat that performance? Here riding Jade Van Bishop. See how beautifully he keeps the balance through the corner, although he was riding fast. Jade really knows how to stay on her feet. Just see Peter still taking the time to set her up in front of the jumps, not leaving her completely. Now this is a good round so far. He's certainly not far away. He has to get a good shot over this one, and then he has to absolutely risk it to the last. Ten seconds there. to get home. 52.33. Emilia Bicocci's time. He's coming down to the last. Will he make it? He goes into the lead. 52.18. What a tremendous ride from the man that won this trophy the last time it was run two years ago. Goes in to the lead 52.18 for belgium peter devos jade van bishop jess 
that was absolutely superb absolutely it was to to a moment he he didn't at one point put the mare in a difficult situation and she really this year she's a horse that i've been watching and just enjoying so much she has a huge future ahead of her this mare and peter has recognized this and is uh, protecting her and chef to keep peter weinberg has recognized this as protecting her she won't jump on sunday niels brinesis will come into the team on sunday um, it's the making of a of a very special mare but when you've got this man behind you. Kevin Stout for France. Just a 10 year old though, as experienced as some of his other horses, Viking La Rousserie. Kevin Stout for France, 52.18. Peter Devos, Jade Van Bishop, current leaders. Last man in. When you're going to battle, it's good to have a Viking on your side. <laughs> Late night jokes now. <laughs> Interesting to see what Kevin can do with Viking. Just, you can just see everybody liking to get these first three jumps out of the way, and then the handbrake comes off. But how much will the handbrake come off by Kevin? A man like Christian, he's so good at riding the shortest line possible. Already looking in the last stride to the turn. He's definitely, definitely there or thereabouts, Phil. It's all about the line into this double. Oh, Viking just being a little mouthy on the corner. Gets it. How much can he risk to the last? Oh, I think he's lost it. He's checked. He goes into fifth place. 54.61. Into fifth place goes Kevin Thout with Viking de la Rosary for France. So the winner of the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona. Peter Devos with Jade Van Bishop. In second place, Emilio Bicocci, Avita SGZ. In third, Christian Alvin for Germany. Take a chance on me. And just 0.7 of a second, 0.8 of a second, split the top three. Stephanie Holman in fourth place. With Flips Little Sparrow, Kevin Stout we've just seen in fifth. Eric van der Vleuten in sixth place. Rodrigo Giestra Almeida for Portugal in seventh. Marcus Henning in eighth for Germany. Luciana Denise with Vertigo de Dessert in ninth for Portugal. Bart Bless with Gin D in tenth. And Nicolas Delmont, Alanine Devin for France in 11th. They were the 11 competitors that came forward to the second round of this, the Hyundai Cup of the city of Barcelona, the Grand Prix. It's good night from us here in Barcelona. From me, Phil Gazala. And me, Jessica Curtin. Sleep well. S hear you, speak to you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.
acabamos de vivir, gran premio Copa Hyundai de la ciudad de Barcelona. Segunda manga emocionante y al final victoria que se marcha de nuevo, al igual que hace dos años, para Bélgica. Ganó en 2017 montando a Claire, vuelve a ganar en 2019 montando a Jade Van de Bishop, se va a quedar a vivir en Barcelona. El aplauso por favor para Peter De Vos. de vos suenan las notas del himno nacional de Bélgica. de vos, protagonista de nuevo aquí en el Real Club de Polo de Barcelona, gran victoria del jinete belga que se va a llevar dos trofeos. El primero, Feo Hyundai, lo va a entregar don Leopoldo Satrustegui, director general de Hyundai en España. Ahí está el trofeo de Hyundai para el ganador, para Peter de vos que montó a Jade Van de Bishop. ...y que ha hecho una segunda manga verdaderamente espectacular. Ahí está Peter De Vos, protagonista de esta entrega de premios... ...recibiendo el primero de los dos trofeos que va a recibir. El segundo trofeo que rep es la Copa Ciudad de Barcelona... ...y la rep de mans al señor Albert Batlle... ...tinent de alcalde de Seguridad de la de Barcelona. Acompañado del señor Santiago Marcet. Es el primer clasificado. Gracias. Me temo, me temo que es para el primer clasificado ese trofeo. Sí. Lo sentimos mucho. Pero Emilio Vico que recibirá otro trofeo. Pero, como les decía, el ganador tiene dos trofeos, la Copa Hyundai y la Copa Ciudad de Barcelona. Ahora sí, el trofeo que le van a entregar. A Peter Devos como ganador de la prueba. Bueno, pequeña confusión, pero al final el trofeo ha llegado a manos de quien debía recibirlo y también va a llegar a manos de quien debía recibirlo ese magnum heredad segura viudas para celebrar el éxito aquí en Barcelona hoy. Peter Devos, que finalmente se ha llevado esos dos trofeos y ese magnum de segura viudas. Viudas. Vamos con el segundo clasificado que sí va a recibir trofeo, por supuesto que sí. Al segundo clasificado, al aplaudimiento se para Emilio Bicocchi, Montana Evita. Rep el trofeo Generalitat de Cataluña, de mans del señor Gerard Figuera, secretario general de l'esport de la Generalitat de Cataluña. Y no es un mal trofeo, ni muchísimo menos. No se puede quejar el italiano Emilio Bicocchi. Copiurat el trofeo al segundo clasificado y las felicitaciones pasaré al tercer clasificado que ha sido el Janet de Alemania, Christian Alman. Christian rebrá el trofeo Diputación de Barcelona de mans del señor David Escudé, diputado de Sports de la Diputación de Barcelona, acompañado también del señor Emilio Zegri. Presidente de la Fundación del Real Club de Barcelona. Rep las felicitaciones al seu trofeo. Foto. Ahí está Cristian Alman recibiendo el trofeo como tercer clasificado. Fue el líder durante unos instantes con ese magnífico caballo de Kitchens on Me. Se quedó cerquita de la victoria. Al final, tercer puesto para el jinete alemán. 
Cuarta clasificada, también ha sido líder durante algunos minutos. Parecía que iba a ser difícil batirla, le han batido tres, pero gran actuación la suya. Gran aplauso, por favor, también para la Amazona sueca, Stephanie Holmen, montando a Flips Little Sparrow. Don Curro Espinos, presidente del Arturo de Polo de Barcelona, junto con don Santiago Mercé, presidente del concurso internacional, van a entregar el trofeo a la cuarta clasificada, gran prueba también de Stephanie Holmen, Amazona de Suecia, que puso la prueba muy cara desde el principio y ha obligado a los clientes que han ido detrás a arriesgar al límite para poder batirla. No ha ganado, pero al final está en esta entrega de premios y recibe su trofeo como cuarta clasificada de la prueba. Y pasemos al 5 clasificat de esta prueba, ha sido el último participante de la segunda mánica y ha quedado 5 Kevin Sto de Francia, Montana Viking de la Rousserie. Rep el seu trofeo de mans del señor Emilio Segrí, presidente de la Fundación del Real Club de Barcelona. Kevin Stout, ahí está que va a recibir el trofeo, salió el último, lo intentó, no lo consiguió, sigue sin conseguir ganar un gran premio del máximo nivel desde hace algún tiempo, pero una vez más vuelve a demostrar su gran calidad de jinete y vuelve a estar entre los mejores de un gran premio internacional como este gran premio de Barcelona. Ahí está posando para la foto, una vez recibido el trofeo y ya hemos entregado todos los premios, así que vamos a cerrar la entrega como hacemos siempre con la vuelta de honor de los protagonistas. esta segunda jornada un show de volteo con el que vamos a cerrar este segundo día prepárense en un momento arrancamos 